I never follow procedures For bottom me made for a demon Jesus inside of my features The fact that I'm only a person Don't know nobody who's perfect Finally got to the surface Now my life body surrounded by serpents A human I'm only a being Being that I'm only human Seeing my niggas was shooting Had my adrenaline rushing like Putin Screwed up in the head and be lucid This is the life of the lucid but all of the friends that I'm losing Got me so close to the edge I might lose it But the power's inside of my hands now I'll never ask for a handout Finding these lyrics, I'm stuck in my room And I'm sitting inside till I stand out Remember my auntie was trapped out So many nights in that trap Yo, sneak this podcast <laughs> George, Greg, back in the building Hey, hey, hey Episode 116 Appreciate everybody who listens Appreciate everybody who follows us what this Google search says most at most athletic person in the world is a picture of Babe Ruth. As what number sixteen? No, or just period. This is most oh, okay. athletic person, and then next to him, Michael Jordan. Next to him, Steph Curry. Oh, all right, Steph Curry. Whoa, have, what are we doing? First of all, Steph Curry nor Babe Ruth should be on anybody's athletic list. All right. The only athletic person on the Warriors is Iguodala. Iguodala. Durant? You think Durant's athletic? What's athletic to you then? I mean, like, I think LeBron James agility, is athletic. Agility. Yeah. I don't look at Durant as like he could do it another sport. That's how I don't look at it. You're I, talking about body type then. I'm talking no, about like your actual like ability inside your own body that you currently have. No, I look at Westbrook. I, he's, I think yeah, he so could he do anything. He's like a 45 inch vertical and also is very agile. I mean, of course he's athletic. So, what do you look at Durant as athletic? Uh, I mean, he's agile. He doesn't need to jump high because he's already seven feet tall. But he's well, there's guess. a lot of guys his size that oh, struggle yeah, yeah. to like okay. barely dunk, and he's jumping through the lane dunking on everybody. All so, right. well, then I, if you go say it that way, like first of all, and if you're seven feet, he's going to the bucket not, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I, athletic as in he's doing and living stuff that he's not supposed to be definitely doing. athletic. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. He could do anything. All right. uh, it's crazy how how he's even back playing as many years as he has been playing. Um, jerseys, one sixteen. Jersey number sixteen. Who wore the jersey number sixteen? You were the one that came up with this. So, but this is your favorite. This is your greatest quarterback of all time. It is the greatest quarterback of all time. Not my greatest quarterback of all time. Uh, <laughs> Joe Montana. You think Joe Montana is better than Tom Brady? Absolutely. What's this based off of? Better everything. I think that's. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, number sixteen. I don't got nothing against Tom Brady. I just hate him. No? <laughs> you probably only hate Tom Brady because of Tuck. I don't think I hate him. I mean, I, that's part of it. I don't think I hate him. Um, I just. I don't. Everyone wants to assign like the greatest of all time to the newest thing. That's why people talk about this LeBron thing. He might be, but but you can't compare it. Like. That's just a cool new thing to do when you are bored and don't have a story to write. I think that's just anything. Like, I think there's not even a such thing as a top five, top ten list. I don't think there's a such thing as that. I mean, you just looked at something that has Babe Ruth as the top athletic player of all time. I don't know what that was. Huh? That must have been. <laughs> that that, that might have been that same article that had, like, sneakers for rent or whatever that it was, was a about. goofy search. Um, number 16, Pedro Stoyakovich. Didn't all Bo right. Jackson wear 16? Maybe in baseball. For the Royals, maybe? The Royals, maybe. Here, let's see. Bo Jackson, baseball number. Brett baseball Hall? Baseball jersey. Brett Hall. Yep, Bo Jackson did wear 16. Brett Hall, yep. So, let's see here. We just saw you Brett Hall, age. Whitey Ford. <laughs> what the heck is that? Pitcher, Major League Baseball. He better not be black. Definitely not because I don't even think blacks were allowed to play major league baseball in those days. Doc Gooden, oh, and he was. That's a good one. Len Dawson, one of the original like really good quarterbacks. Chiefs. Oh, that's right. That's a fact. I think he wore long sleeve jerseys. <laughs> I have no. I feel like I thought I would have had another. I don't know what that means, but I think of throwbacks. So we think when we talk about this. I can only think in throwback I, terms. I don't even. I. Uh, Never for me. That's never how I do it. What number did Elvis Groback wear? Seven, maybe. Did he? Was he ever a Raider? I shouldn't remember stuff like this. Like I definitely should not have that memorized. But if I looked this up and he wore number seven, I don't think he did. I think it was number nine. Bro, I'm telling you. I don't know how I thought of Brett Hull. To be honest with you, 
I mean, Brett Holes are great. He might be the greatest hockey player of all time. You probably seen his St. Louis Blues jersey somewhere. Probably, but I'm thinking of the, I'm thinking of uh, Bruins, the Boston. Gerback wore two numbers, eleven and eighteen. It looks like. I'm thinking there got to be some more basketball players besides Pedro Stojakovic. Oh, I thought of, I can't think of his name now. Play for the Grizzlies. No, his brother. Allen Iverson. Pau Gasol. Allen <laughs> Iverson. <laughs> Yo, I think Iverson played for the Grizzlies, Nuggets, and Pistons. Weird. Um, that was the first time I knew that Detroit had casinos. When Allen Iverson went to Detroit, <laughs> when they said he started losing all his money at casinos, I was like, oh, Ben, ben McLemore. Ben McLemore? Oh, he sucks. I was trying to think of him another episode about he athletes sucks. that came out of college that had no business coming out that I thought were going to be great. Uh, he is awful. And I think he's on the Grizzlies now. All right, let's see. I thought I had high hopes for him. Tony Douglas. I don't know who that is. James Johnson. Nope. Oh, James Paul Jones. Zipster. Nope. <laughs> They're all in the NBA. And, yes, Paul Gasol. Um, That's current NBA. Oh, no, la- uh, players in 2016-17 <laughs> season. Okay. All right. Pickups. <laughs> Any pickups. Pickups. Did we do pickups before releases? I guess we do. I always do. What'd you um, got? Young One Orange. Oh, is that they the one came, you got to pick up? They came today, so I'll go look at them, decide where I want to keep them, return them. Maybe. Why are you going to return them? I thought mm-hmm. y'all was dying for those. Dying is probably the wrong word. Well, let's the put it- other ones are the ones that I want. Which one is that? The one with Boost that I sent you a picture of. And you said it's tight, but you ain't copping Adidas. Um, by that the time those better. drop, I might be back on it. Well, if they ever drop. You know, not copying Adidas has made me a little more fiscally responsible. <laughs> because I don't got so many after brands I got to jump through. After you just said like 27 pickups last week, that's what you yeah, want to come Yeah, but that was show? eBay cops. And I was more like, you know what? F this. Uh, I done got rid of all the money. I done got some money. I don't matter. I'm good. Um, I mean, young ones. I'm I'll be honest with you. I really want those. Okay, <laughs> like I really do. But just like you said, from that tweet you sent from what's his what's his name? I think they're still available. Or that was that just that day? I have um, no idea. What's crazy is is how many people were dying with the pictures, losing their minds for them, and they're sitting everywhere. Like they're still on sites. Not online, are they? Those orange ones? Yeah, they're online still. They're on ASOS I know the, I know or whatever the, it's called. I know the bigger sizes aren't. Them joints are gone. They're I can't on. believe Adidas sold out. I was like, what? Essence? Is that what that site's called? S-S-E-N-S-E? Oh, S-S-E? Essence? Yeah. Essence? Oh, Essence. Essence. It's Canada? on there still. Um, In Canada? Shout out Canada. I don't understand why no one cares about the red ones that much. I think the red ones are okay. Like I don't think they suck. Team USA didn't make the World Cup, dude. It's over. Yeah, okay. It's over for us. What's funny is... Man, we got Donald Trump. We got Donald Trump, and we didn't make the World Cup. It's over for us. You can't be representing America overseas. Well, in Russia, you can. I mean, technically, this is Russia soil that we're on right now, so we might want to be careful. (laughs) This is actually Mexico soil, but we're not going to get into that. All right. Mm. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) We did purchase the Louisiana purchase from France. I don't know how the West... Coast. Alamo. I don't know how this went down. I had to brush up on my history. I told you we was in the movie. Sure, there was a financial transaction. We talked about that when they showed that movie. Now Hawaii. Alamo. I don't know who's Hawaii. Though. Ain't that Japan? Yeah, Hawaii. We stole. I don't think we paid for that. But who we take that from? Um, maybe Japan. I don't know. You know, you gotta have. They guts. had their own. It was their own. Like that's uh, a long journey to take somebody else stuff. Bro. Hawaii was a um, a monarchy. I think uh, they had like a king and queen and stuff. I'm pretty sure. Oh no! I think you might be right. Alaska was on was somebody else's though. Yeah, probably Russia. I think it was Russia. <laughs> God bless the USA. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I got. I didn't get anything. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I could have yeah, got. You, you copping everything out here? No. No, I could have got Michigan twelves. Like I from where? Off Nike. I I could easily got them. Off the, oh, I, I took hell. Oh, see, I the nine and a half. I did. And then I did a 10, and it was like, yeah, cool, all the way through everything. I'm like, all right, so then, actually, maybe, I don't know. I'm just, for some reason, I don't know why I'm thinking I had it in the thing. I could Come on, finish line, maybe? No, 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 I'm thinking of Nike. I don't know why. For some reason, I feel like I got, I could have got them. I have no idea why uh, I got that. I, um, I took an L. Not that I cared to have them. I was gonna, if I got them at Foot Locker app, I was just going to flip them for like $10 profit or whatever. And then I got, <laughs> obviously, the ones you saw in my house, the... Uh, 
Size, Safari, and Max 95s? They're all right. Uh, no, they're not. They're, I don't I, know, they're, man. They're all right. I don't think they suck. I didn't say they suck. I didn't say they're good. I said they're okay. I just don't understand how, like, just based off pictures, the Air Max 1, the blocking of stuff they use is so much better. The bottom is gray. You know what? The midsole. Oh, I thought it was white. White gray. You know light, what? Light gray. You know what? They sitting there adding swooshes, swooshes to Jordan threes, calling them tinkers and stuff. They should have added a swoosh to Air Max ninety fives at the side. You know? I think Air Max ninety five could use a swoosh on the side now. Mm. Innovation. You heard but, it here first. But tinkers are trash, so it wouldn't do it for me. Pause. But tinkers. Are <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. There's certain shoes. I'm like a swoosh. Mike can improve it. Them brown tinkers? Oh my god, those suck. All right. I mean, you trying to put a swoosh on like Jordan Twelves or something? Like, what? <laughs> no. no Jordan should have a swoosh on it after sevens. <laughs> I don't think eights has swoosh on it. I think eight, nine, ten. I don't think any of those has swooshes on them. I don't think anything before that has swoosh. Seven, on it. six. Nike swoosh in the back. What are you talking about? Nike on the back. Oh, you're just talking about the back. I'm talking I'm about the side. General. Like a big swoosh on the side. Oh, like no, every no, other I just Nike mean shoe. like a swoosh in general. No Jordans after I think seven had a swoosh on them ever. Wait, I don't even know if sevens did. Sevens didn't have a swoosh. They didn't have anything in the back. I have no idea. Oh. I don't remember these things. I thought you didn't know anything about shoes. You know, I figure, you know. <laughs> you do some research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I figure I better yeah, great, have some, great. some information. Sounds good. Um, what else? I think that's it. Hey, Michigan twelves. I don't know if I would have kept them or what. I don't. I don't. I don't. Well, be- I'm sure they suck. I don't believe it. I don't think they suck. I'm sure they suck. I wanted the box, which I didn't know the box was the same box as Jordan Eleven. We already got that Damn. box. <laughs> it's the same one. I thought I it was assume. Oh. Oh, maybe it has a different picture I on think the it's box, like some but different it's basically the same thing. I think it had like Tom Brady on the bench for the Wolverines. The boxes they did way back in the day were narrow. Um, I don't Mike know how box. why the box is so big now. I don't get it. I don't either. <laughs> I don't think you could wear a Michigan. I don't think anybody should be wearing a Michigan sneaker if you didn't go to Michigan or at least live in Michigan. Yeah, but you've always said that. You don't I don't believe in wearing it colleges unless it's a retro. I'll wear a retro but you said you Michigan want Oregon shoes. That's what the only thing that makes I sense. said what? You like some of the Oregon shoes. I like them, but I'd never wear them. Yeah, you would. You think I'd wear Oregon shoes? No, I would sell Oregon Probably. shoes. Well. I would never <laughs> wear you, Oregon are shoes. Are someone giving them to you? No, I'll say <laughs> the only ones I care for is the threes. Yeah, you will wear it. I don't think I'll wear those. You'll wear it. Only if it was a GR. Because <laughs> <All right. laughs> it makes no sense to wear them. And uh-huh, I just like right. the duck feet in the back. And the only reason why I might wear an Oregon duck shoe is because I lived in Oregon and I thought I was gonna go to I thought I was gonna go to Eugene. I, I thought I was. ASU is Adidas, so sorry to break it to you. Actually, they might be Under Armour now. What are they now? I can't even keep track no more. I think it's still Adidas. I don't let, know. Let me check. Who knows? I know one thing. I'm going to be trash this year. Tempe Normal School Athletic Contract. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> the ins and outs. I feel like if you went to any, like, I feel like somebody who went to, like, Texas Longhorns or somewhere, if you're running around wearing another major university who has, like, some type of history and some type of sport, you're, you're crazy. So anybody wearing a Michigan sneaker, it's just cr- If the Michigan Jordan 4s came out, would you wear those? Um, I don't think you could wear them. You can't. I would have no reason. Yeah, no. You couldn't wear it. You have no, you talking about, like, the ones they release, like, Cal and North Carolina and all yeah, that like trash? No, ones. I'm not wearing that trash. I feel like there was some fire ones, like Georgetown or something that we thought were fire. I could never wear them. I couldn't wear a college anything that I didn't go to. I gave all my money to Arizona State Arizona, Arizona State University. They gave me a pretty good education. I made something out of it. <laughs> the only place that's valuable is where we work. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and the state of Arizona. Nah, it's valuable. This, elsewhere, you can't bro. buy nothing from ASU till 2023. You know, that's when the contract goes to. Arizona State. You better state, hope they switch to Nike. You know? Arizona. Wait, until how long? 2023. No, but I might be switching. I might be buying these again. Yeah. Eventually. Oh, all right. I think I'm just going to go through December. <laughs> I think okay. so. You doing? Oh, you, you doing? Right. You doing limited edition hating? No, nah, I don't Lim- think limited edition uh, protest. I don't think anybody <laughs> who doesn't live in Michigan. Have any ties to Michigan? Should wear Michigan Jordans. You just shouldn't. Uh, I know just... people who went to MSU and root for Michigan. So I think in that state, anything is possible. To, anything if they you allow went anything. To Michigan State. The only reason why you could root for Michigan is after your team is out of the tournament and Michigan's still in it. Fine. Oh, no. I'll root for them. Oh no, they have season tickets to Michigan. Oh yeah, no, that's not. That's blasphemy. <laughs> now when ASU is cooked, 
I, I'm, I want U of A to win. I'm not out there like, let's go. But like, if they win, cool. Then they're, they're, I'm in the same state. Mm -mm. But I'm not like, let's do it. They could win. I'm not out here rooting for James. I didn't Harden, say no. you could root for him. <laughs> if ASU, you. If, if it was NCAA tournament, championship, Final Four, U of A, ASU made it somehow. I mean, if they play whatever. Duke, then I would be like, right. okay. If they got to play a specific team, you hate more than them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I hate ASU as much as I hate other teams. Like Notre Dame, I hate the most. And then UCLA is probably second. I don't think you can hate Notre Dame. Basketball or yes, football you or can. just in general. If you grew up in Southern California and you're a USC That's person, you hate Notre yeah, Dame. But as a Notre Dame literally has Notre Dame is like Yankees, Duke basketball, wherever, where they just have random fans in places that didn't have no chance. Like, not even that they like didn't go to Notre Dame, didn't have an opportunity even to submit their application, let alone get in. Okay. Stop it. Now. You're I don't rooting think, for Notre Dame. Okay, I don't I never root for Notre Dame. One thing I hate about Notre Dame was that it was guaranteed on Channel 12 on NBC. They still are. Single, all the time. Now, as I've gotten older, I appreciate it. Like, it's like, it's just dope that no. they're on TV. I no. think it's, I, I do. I don't like them and I don't. Now, I will them. say the movie Rudy was dope. Movie movie Rudy. I root, I don't know if it was I, dope. I rooted for Rudy. I didn't root for Notre Dame. Okay, look. Rudy didn't do anything. Though. He got a sack. Man. Rudy, a uh, pause. Did that really happen? Yeah. Man? Okay. He got carried off the field. <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, I don't know about everything, but I'm, I I went red. He got a sack. That or got a tackle for loss or something, and they made it. Like he made a good play, and then maybe they like just they fudged like stopped it a the little third bit and pause. one or something. <laughs> All right. If he was on the field playing defensive end on third and one, they getting the first down. All right, they are getting the first down. Well, that movie and that joint said at the end that he was the only player ever carried off the Notre Dame field. I was like, all right. I remember this cat in class. They was carried like, Charlie, Charlie Weiss off. I remember that because he it was a scene. Oh, I remember you know, that. He big. I remember. This dude in class was like, yeah, they have in a stretcher. <laughs> and I was dying <laughs> laughing. I don't like uh, Notre Dame. No, they got no business winning. I don't like their head coach. They'll never win. I don't like nothing about them. They'll never win a national championship. Though. They've already won. I used to like Ty Willingham, but then I realized, oh, I don't like Ty Willingham. No. He's weird. No. He was too militant. No. Charlie Rice, overrated. The only thing I ever, ever I love. They gave him USC, a ten year. They gave him Notre a ten year Dame contract games. because he played USC close in a game they weren't supposed to win. Those liner what in Reggie the world? Bush games. Woo -hoo -hoo. You want to talk about football? Couldn't wait. All right. Yeah, I was nervous that one year when they were in a. At they, Notre Dame? Yeah, Bush Push and game. Pushed when they, fourth and nine, and they threw that pass. I was like, oh, that's it. That's oh, the end of the street. When Bush pushed them. Oh, no, I wasn't nervous about that. I had uh, a feeling they would score once they got down near the end. but Because it was, still was a minute left. It wasn't even legal, huh? It wasn't legal at that point, but it's legal now. So that basically means. You can do that now? Trash oh. rule. Yeah, they changed it. Just like the tuck rule was a shit rule when it existed. If you have a rule that gets changed years later because people realize how bad it is, I'm not listening to your no, like see, to, to your argument about no. how I was cheating. Tuck rule. We had only okay. First of all, the tuck rule. I didn't even know. No one knew when Bush Push Linered in that was illegal. No, we didn't. I of think course. somebody might have said it on the broadcast, but people. So that's the thing. <laughs> like it shouldn't be when you talk about people making an outrage. Like the whole thing with like what's a catch? Like that we've actually watched so many games where we're like what like we've seen it that that's because times. that's different like people know when you playing ball with your son or your friends or whatever like you catch the ball and then transfer to your other hand it falls out or you catch the ball and go down on one knee and it falls out it's a catch you know what it looks like when it's to secure a football like pittsburgh game last year or whatever when Tight ben end. threw it to him to pass and he stretched it across the goal line and hit the ground and it came out that's a catch. Well, we the know the difference. problem with that was he crossed the goal line. The objective is to cross the goal line. That was it. I don't care what he did after. Once they crossed that line, yeah, but that's it. But it doesn't matter, though. Why should the ground – and that's why they changed the rule this year again. We're yeah, going to see how it works. they changed the rule but... because outrage, outrage for that, we kept seeing it over and over and over. Oh, I can yeah. name almost every single player. There was three reasons. Okay, so there was – Huck rule Listen. happened twice that same season that it happened to that, and I, I didn't see those. I didn't even know that. No, I don't think so. I thought that was the first time I ever seen that. Yeah, you, no, no. I think you're making that up. No, but I'm saying the outrage for the Tuck rule, they should have just left at the rule. Like – Sure, love it because it, it doesn't happen enough to have outrage. It doesn't cause outrage because that was to the Super Bowl. That's yeah, the outrage. No, they change it because it's the it's the wrong thing. If, if something's wrong, you got to change it. Are you serious, bro? 
Oh, what are you doing, huh? Camera was off. <laughs> Technical get difficulties. You gotta be kidding me with that. Who knows how long that's been off? Technical difficulties. Twenty five minutes. Oh my was it working goodness. at any point? Is the battery good? Yeah, four hours. That's the recording. I mean, I'm sorry, no, the battery's 100. percent Yeah, it's full. Damn, Damn bro. Full time, fam. Garbage, huh? <laughs> Stupid camera. Technical difficulties. I don't even remember what we were talking about. Talking about the tuck rule. Yeah, you had. <laughs> yeah, there's okay. Something can happen rare. But that doesn't mean there's a reason to l let it continue to be a rule. Like this World Cup, they brought in the, like, you can have the video review. And they already in the group stage with, like, matches left to play already broke the, like, record for number of penalty kicks. At a, but oh, yeah. if you get it right, who cares? I'd rather you get it right and you have more of something happen or you break a record before the tournament's even halfway over than the opposite. I feel like you have to have an, a certain amount of errors in order to start changing rules, so. Like you can do that. Like it's like baseball. The tug rule is dumb because people know you're not throwing the ball. You're trying to run with it or put it back. And then if you fumble, you fumble. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't say the rule is fine. That was just the rule's the, trash. That's our catch only rule reference. was trash. Anyone saying that the catch rule was not trash is a moron. Pittsburgh scored a touchdown. The funniest part about that, not that the NFL will care, that game was like the. With the week that decided who went to the playoffs of fantasy football, and I, or maybe it was in like the semifinals, and I lost a game because Roethlisberger lost that yards and touchdown. You based pass. everything off fantasy football. L. Like I said, it's not important, but I'm just being honest. Do you know how many fantasy seasons that decided them saying no when it was legitimate touchdown? And that's a lot of money, you know. No, you play for a lot of money. No, you do. I only play not anymore. Oh, well, you did. I only play in one league now for a hundred bucks. I have no other fantasy leagues. Though. The most expensive league I play in is fifty. So, so you. if anybody wants to let me join their league this year, I'm a free <laughs> agent. Uh, free agent. Uh, release this for week. Free these. Um, international threes come out. You copping those? Hell no. You don't like those? I like them, but I'm not buying them. I kind of like them. I'm not buying them. Should we have those if we don't have true blue threes? Man, I'm not buying those. I, I'm asking a question. No. Don't own them because they suck. Actually, they don't suck, but don't own threes ever because, unless you're 6'4 or taller. What are you talking about? Wait, you don't got black cements anymore? Sold both of them. I don't either. I'm going to find <laughs> them. I'm going to find them. I don't funny? either. Here's, a, here's what's funny. So I'm looking in the closet because i got to figure out how to fix the closet because it's literally going to collapse. And I see extra Jordan shoe boxes. Bro, I think they're just in the closet. You have a drill. Pause. Like I don't have any wood screws though. You don't. Okay. I need wood screws. You just need screws. No. Like, I mean, they, yes, they're wood screws, but they're just like more prevalent than any other kind of screws. No, I need wood screws though. <laughs> Why would I screw a regular screw in it? Huh? What do you mean? What is a regular screw? Like a screw that you put in, like you building something like IKEA or something. That's a regular screw. That's a bolt. No, it's not. You ain't using no If bolts. you have a screw with a pointy tip, pause, and and the like a bolt, and it's like a no bolts and no IKEA furniture. And there's a lot of bolts in IKEA furniture. I don't know what you building from IKEA because if you got to use a socket wrench for IKEA furniture, you ain't got no IKEA. Are furniture. Are you talking about the screws that have like a flat? The end of the screw is flat. Whether it's flat, round, Phillips no. head. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not talking about that side of the screw. I'm talking about the other side that goes in. Pause. Yeah. So you're talking about one that's flat. That's a bolt. That's not a screw. No, I'm talking about a one that's pointy. Yeah, that's yeah. a wood screw. I know what a screw is. I want a wood screw. The brown ones. The like super oh, long. Oh, no. Nah, you don't need that. I do because it's a big piece of wood, then the wall. I need it to go through the wood, through the wall, and then to the stud. No, you don't. But no, the closet is literally stretched. I understand what you're talking about, but okay, so the sheetrock you have is probably like three eighths or. Look, bro, five sixteenths or whatever, look, whatever the standard sheetrock is. Like it's just not that long. Right. Uh, what I do, I do a lot of work at my house. The the uh, stud is right behind that. It's not you don't need like a long screw to bro, pause to. I have to. I can't do I it don't again. Know what you're talking about? The weight is too much. The weight of what? All you got sneakers. sneakers. You got sneakers. Well, okay. what I and this is how no, and you I got size realize, nine and a half. So you ain't got some size twelve. I didn't realize the, the closet was falling until like I'm stacking them and they just keep going like this. It just kept falling forward. I done trashed a lot of boxes. All you got to do is move the shelf up or down into like a different hole in the wood. That's it. That's probably what the issue is. Oh no, you're probably right. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna push it up and then just zzz, 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 super quick. 
Okay, that's not how it works. But. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. You better have Hannah come help you. Man. Are you copying international threes? Fuck no. If you come discount. Um, uh, no. I don't have any business wearing threes. I'm not 6'4". I think you think threes are a lot bigger than they really if are. If you're 5'11 and have size 12 foot, don't wear threes. First don't of all. Threes. Is that on? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> don't wear threes if you're 5'11 and, and size 12. You can wear threes. No, you can't. You can wear threes. No. Foot's I think too, I can wear threes Foot's now. too big. Yeah, because you wear nine and a half. No, no, no. I've owned every single three on earth pretty much, all right? And I couldn't wear any of them. I, I wear them. I'm like, dude, these, I cannot. They, I look awful in threes. Right? No one laces their threes correctly unless you're. I don't even know what incorrectly or correct lace threes are. Oh, if yeah, I yeah. find mine, you need to oh, tell yeah, me because oh, yeah. I don't want to make that mistake. <laughs> now, yeah, Jordan yeah. 4s, yeah, you know. for some odd reason, I can wear Jordan 4s. You can wear Jordan 4s. If you're trying to say you can't wear. I don't know why you think Jordan 3s are higher than Jordan 4s. Like, what do you. A Jordan 3 is not bigger than a Jordan 4, especially the size 12. Jordan 4, you can do more stuff. Can do it. Unlace, you can do it. Inside yes, can, the wings. John Stockton, you can change outside them. Outside the straps. wings. You could do more stuff. All right. You buying Levi's, any of them? I mean, it does not make it sound easy. <laughs> I don't know. There's no one here locally getting them unless Undefeated didn't post it and has, has them. No, they're not getting them. I yeah. don't think. None what of the up? House of Hoops are getting them because it would have been on the app. Uh, the only it's app neatest? that has them on there is uh, Foot Action. And foot action, no local foot action getting them. So we only got one. Is sneakers out again? The sneakers out get the blue ones? They're not on there. I don't remember how I even tried for the blue ones. What do we try on? I didn't try. Oh, you know what? I don't think I woke up. Unless you did a raffle somewhere. I think I did a raffle on SNS. That's it. I mean, the black ones. I'm sure it'll be another L. I like the black ones. All right. The white ones. I don't want to keep them. White denim is strictly for Puerto Ricans and Cubans. Uh, That's (laughs) the only people that can wear white denim. And that's facts. Uh, don't nobody got any business wearing any white denim. I would only buy the white ones just to do something else to them. Uh, dye them red, dye them something. Like, that's the only reason to do it. Let's see here. Oh, I didn't know those shoes were. I didn't know those were women's. Those just do it? Nah, they're Joints are only women's? Um, there's men ones on the sneakers app now. They've been out. I mean, overseas sites had them for a while. A lot of them cares. have. Wait, wait, wait. Like, sitting the buy? Yeah. The orange Air Max ones? Oh, I want uh, those. I saw them a long time ago. No, you don't. Why not? You only think the joints are tight? You hated on those a long time ago. Well, all right. We'll get through them. Oh, actually, uh, just do a pack. Any of those? No. None of them. Not you don't like the Air Max 1? Not copying none of that nonsense. I think the orange ones are kind of fire. I mean, if someone gave it to me, would I wear it? Yeah, maybe. Okay, I'd wear anything that gave it to me. No, you wouldn't. Actually, you're right. Uh, I don't know. Just Yes, just do it high. Air, <laughs> Air Force 1, you copping. Man. I'm kind of like an Air Force One. <laughs> no, you're not. I am. Stop man. it. I'm going to tell you one thing that I Those will be buying this year, and that's X- probably Air Force One. EXP X14s came out on some site a while back, and I was going to buy them. I don't even I know what that like, is. Mm. What the heck is that? It's like that shoe that you said you liked. What are you talking oh, about? Oh, that's what that looks like? Oh, that's nah. a different version of it. The one that you said was way better than that. Yeah, this is a different one. But this was came on our website like last week or two weeks ago, and it was just sitting. And I was like, hmm. Because I think it has a uh, React. I think. I'll tell you one thing that we definitely got to figure out how to get, and that's the OG colorway of the 87 Reacts. Uh, yes, but that's we'll have to wait till it comes out in America. I, I'm, bro, every time I see. Element those, 87? Yeah, I haven't seen one person wear you those. You don't like tracks. shoes, you can see the socks, though, so I don't know why Who you. told you that? You did. Uh, no. Yes. No. You've said that before. I don't like shoes where you can see your no, socks. No, no, no. I'm not talking see through. Like through. I'm talking like what's the one that I had like vents, like openings like that. I don't yeah. like that. When the shoe was made to see like your sock through it, that's fine. Espos, those are fine. What are you talking about? I love Espos. All right. Well, the Air well, Force I'm not twos? talking about Espos, so. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Now, I'm not talking about Invis- Invisible Girl Air Force Ones. All right. <laughs> All right. I don't like seeing the imprint of my toes on something like a Roche run. That's not what I'm talking about. You I said know. the other thing before, no, too. No, because you sent something that had, like, vents you could yeah. see in the shoe. Yeah, that's Not, fine. like, clear I'm pretty sheer. sure you said both. Look, I would cop me some super fire socks and wear them. Now. I would just wear low white socks, and then it would look like the shoe is white, <laughs> which is the goal. It's it should boring, be the goal. It, uh, but that's not. You got to cop some, like, have good shoes on. You Gucci don't got why you got that on. Why? Yeah, it's Gucci Ghost. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, I'm definitely going to try to cop those kid golds just to see what they look like in the box. And then hopefully the prices are high enough that I can flip it. Oh, <laughs> uh, 
I can, Kobe, gold Kobe shoes. Kobe Mundial 18, I'm definitely trying to cop. Gold shoes are so awful. The red, the knit print, no. I don't consider Air Max 97s gold, even though they're considered gold. They're darker than gold. No, they're gold. Ronnie Feig, Pinnacle, Ele- Pin- Pinnacle Sixes, and these new Copa Cabanas, them joints. <laughs> <laughs> what is a Pinnacle, Pinnacle Six? six what? Them super oh, gold. Oh, 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 with the white. That's Rouse gold. Right. That's gold. The same thing. I consider Air Max 97s <laughs> You must like be thinking of bronze. bronze or something. Like, they're not bronze. All right. They're not copper, but they're not gold. Anyways, let's I'm gonna, tack you I'm gonna try to cut. I can't even wear the Ronnie Fogs I got from Simple. The, yeah, you can. No, I can't. Them joints are, first of all, they're for the USA. So I'm not making myself like a fool. They're not in the World <laughs> Cup. I can only you wear Brazils right now. have to wait until right a now. special tournament they play I in. wore those Brazils out so much since that. Because the only World Cup shoe I have. And I'm like, yo, I should have bought the Portugal Air Force Ones back in the day. The Brazil Air Force One, I should have saved them. <laughs> the Germany, Norway, no, all I'm them wearing, joints. I'm any of those other country stuff. Is though. Germany out? Yep. Okay, so they're out. That was my stupid out. Pick. Get out, racist. Jeremy, <laughs> Germany, not Jeremy. Germany was my sleeper pick. Yes, they all wore Jeremy Scotts in the games that they lost. They were my sleeper pick. Sleeper so pick. Out. They were the favorite to win the tournament. Yeah, but I'm saying I had already picked two teams before them. I said, shoot, who did I have? Probably Brazil and Germany. No, I didn't have Brazil. Maybe. I had no, I didn't. Yeah, Brazil and Germany. No, I, I didn't. I mean, I don't Brazil. know, but I didn't have Brazil. I had. I don't know why you pick anyone else. <sighs> shoot, who did I have? I picked Spain to win. That's all I know. I didn't have Spain. God dang it. I don't remember. Either way, the only team that has to win is Argentina. That's facts. All right. Messi has to win. I would like to see him win because then all the critics would go away forever. He has to win. But I don't know if he has to win. They're all, it's almost kind of getting set up. Well, but what he said yesterday win. made me angry after the game. So he said. Just, he said it would have been unfair if we didn't advance and we deserve to advance. No, yeah, you didn't. You have out. three games. If you lose all three games, you don't deserve to advance. What are you talking about, Messi? Because Germany's coach came in the thing today and said we didn't deserve to advance because we didn't advance. you absolutely right. Cheers for you. Why you say South Korea was happy and sad? Because they weren't advancing, but they won. They beat Germany 2 nothing. Oh yeah. So oh, they were happy okay. to be Germany to nothing. Oh, yeah. but, See, then I didn't thing, know what but then the tournament was That's over. That's right. I didn't know what <laughs> happened. I looked at the score and I was like They were all celebrating after the game, but then they were just like, mm. Hey trash though. Hey, that play up son. Talk about Jeremy. Uh, he Germany's trash. Oh, you have you to lose it. Jeremy though, Jeremy Scott. That's <laughs> the first online, thing I'm huh? thinking of. Uh, There's some Manor. shoes on here you didn't say is coming out, by the way. I don't know if you just Which conveniently skipped over it. No, or... I ain't got nothing else. All I got. There's a Yeezy coming out. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yellow Teeth Butters. Whatever them things called. Yellow Teeth might have been a better name. Ugh. Them joints. You copy those? I'm going to try. To keep? If I get those, I think I'm going to sell the other V2 that I got, the copper one. Just because I only... I'll trade those. I mean, sell those. quick. Get rid of all that. Mm-hmm. Sell them all. Mm-hmm. Start mm-hmm. over. Well... Get get the black 500s that are coming out. No. What? <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Get no. those. You're, what? 500s are the ones. I'm sorry. The... Black 700s. Okay. Get black 700s. Okay. Get butters. And then okay, what's the other talking. color? No. Sesame seed? Sesame seed. better than butters. That's it. Get rid of coppers? No. I mean, yes. Keep all the V1s. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I don't have oh, any okay. other V2s. I told you. You y- only have copper? Yes. You oh. the one who had 500 Yeezys. I had three. And then you like were like... Psh, you still have Yeezys. All right. I think you landed on this right here. Hey, you like. <laughs> uh, um, uh, what else coming out? That's it? Yeah, that's you it. said one shoe. Uh, you forgot everything else. Uh, um, I'm just saying. NBA draft. NBA draft. You didn't say kits? I said kits. Those I said come out this week? Yes. Man. It's Friday. Websites don't be having their release stuff right. I said kits and Yeezys in unit, so I win. Well, both those kits are not on my radar. Right. Yeah, because they're Adidas. That's true. <laughs> I don't think I care about butters. I just want V2s are comfortable, and it's better than coppers, so why not? Eh, I don't know if they're better than coppers. It so. is. I don't know, man. Oh, it's better. Mm. Every time I see a pick, they look worse and worse. Nah, you lying. I seen a cat. Shout out to Andrew Aguero. He sent a picture of somebody. You know what? Do kind of sent a picture of that guy who cut an actual V2 out of butter. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I hate people. But you already knew that, so. Um, what, honestly, this might be an unpopular opinion, but what actually have gotten whacker and whacker to me every time I see them is um, turtle doves. 
Oh, what? I mean, <laughs> you crazy. That's unpopular. I apologize. I'll but. tell you what's gotten whacker and whacker, and that's a uh, 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 Presto Air Off White. So. <coughs> you own Presto Off Whites. No, I'm talking about the newer ones. Oh, well, you're trying to cop, so. Just, no, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Oh, yeah, I'm going to try to cop. <laughs> well, you but don't. that's because they have no choice. <laughs> so they're Off Whites. <laughs> oh, you have a choice, says someone. Yeah, first of all, <laughs> you don't have a choice. If you're a DJ Clark, Clint, Clark Kent, <laughs> you 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 don't have to. All right, uh, NBA draft, NBA draft, play out like you thought. Did we talk about that already? We didn't talk we about, about it. No, before, we, the draft was the oh, day after Thursday. Yeah. Um, actually, hold on. Let me look this up real quick because I had tweeted about this, and this is actually a good topic. So I don't know if you want to say anything while I look this up. Uh, what's up, everybody? <laughs> oh, this is Greg. We out here. No, nothing else to say on the on the mic. We out here today, uh, doing our thing. What I'm looking up has to do with the Bulls draft. So, okay, here we go. So this is the the player the Bulls drafted number seven. Wendell Carter went to Duke. Oh, Duke. Yeah, yeah. His mom. Freshman. His parents have been known for being kind. He's the one who like looked like he was from uh, coming to America in the draft oh, with he the had Gucci stuff on. I don't know if it was Gucci, but they he had that Gucci thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he looked like he was from Zamunda. Yeah. But anyways, his parents are known for being like kind of like saying what they want to say. Like they're not quiet about if they some do? controversy oh. is going down or whatever. So his mom's kind of been like, ouch, yeah, for a while. So this is what his mom said. Um, in a moment's time, or this isn't exactly from his mom, this is a story about them. So in a moment's time, Carter Jr. went from the incoming focal point for Duke to an afterthought, from future shoe-in as a top pick to risk of being lost in the shadow of a more her- heralded teammate. So this has to do with he had already committed and maybe signed. I don't remember what the timeline is, but then they got Bagley after that because oh. Bagley reclassified. So... His mom played college basketball. His dad, something, college basketball too, maybe. So this is her comments. Her, my initial reaction, I was pissed. And it wasn't. And I wasn't pissed because Marvin was coming. To be honest, I felt like it was information that was kept from us. It felt shady. It felt like my baby was going to get kicked to the curb. I felt all of that. So she's going in on Sh- Coach Shishesky. K. Yeah, going in on Coach K. So anyways. The battle she won't win, so. Well, you're right, but she still got her son pick seven, so they're going to be rich. So, <laughs> I mean, they're not losing. Is he good? Okay, that's where I'm getting with okay. with this. So the whole point of this thing was, like, his dad said, this is what his, da- his dad or his mom told him after Bagley committed. So they said, everyone knows you can score. So if Duke is going to make Bagley the focal point of the offense, just let him score the points, and then you just commit to defense and become the best defensive player in the country. So I'm reading this thing. The draft happened where they picked him. I read this a couple days after the draft. And I wasn't really sold on him, the Bulls picking him, because I think the Bulls got other issues where they need, like. And I read this, and I was like, I'd be lying if I didn't read this. And I'm like, "Mm, you know what? This kind of makes me feel better about this pick. If he, like, went into Duke and his parents were like, you know what? Just play defense, be the best defensive player you could be, and just let him do it. And who cares? And he was the number one player in the country in post defense oh. saw that on synergy sports the other day yeah, that's pretty good then. 0.41 points per possession defending the post the reason why that's pretty good is because he actually did something that they told him like he did what they set out yes. for him to do that's a good thing so if anybody on the bulls well you guys and the bulls stretch. need a big guy who's a post big guy as opposed to marking and marking a you know, perimeter big guy. He's a post big guy. So we'll see. Is So to answer your question, I feel better <laughs> after reading this about the draft than I did when it happened. Because when it happened, I was like, well, why are you picking another big guy? Don't I had never even heard of him. All right. Yeah, he was the top. He was like one of the top three, four high school players coming out that year. Him and Colin Sexton. I remember Colin Sexton later on. I forgot when he got drafted. Oh, if you want to know anything about him, I'll tell you. Because I that's who Hannah and I went to see Alabama down in Tucson. Yeah, yeah. And we sat in the second row and watched them in person. So. I didn't realize who it was. I was like, who the heck is that? And then I was like, oh, I think they play. I think I watched them play uh, Trey Young them. Like Alabama, I think, might have played. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah, did. yeah. That's why I realized who he was. And I was like, oh, okay. They did. Uh, is he good? I remember him. But I'm like, I don't know if he's good enough to, I didn't know he's good so, enough to be in the top 10. at the NBA level, I think it might be a little bit different because it won't be as easy. Okay, so Colin Sexton, when you see him in person – 
Yeah, he looks. Like I mean, everybody. he's like a no, but I mean, he's like he's he looks like a linebacker, like the that big, the biggest awesome. calves I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay, the, okay. <laughs> these are the things when you go to basketball games you notice because you look at KD, KD is skinny as a pencil, all right, and then you see people like Colin Sexton who can basically get to the rim at will in college basketball. Like I said, it's a different game, NBA. Defenders are better. They're gonna cut lanes off. They're stronger. Mm. No, this. I think NBA's if defense you, is better. Uh, it's, uh, you're saying that because the offensive players are what you see shine, and they're better. It's not. I'm not. Don't tell me. No, 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 no. They're better defensively. If there, you, there isn't anybody who commits to doing what you're saying that he can do. I couldn't tell you if the defense is better or not in the NBA right it's now. Way better. If you would have said better players and better athletes. They're just bigger and better athletes, yes. But if you can get to the hole, Iverson can get to the hole on anybody, all right? If you could commit to that now a days, you could probably be an elite star. No one's going to stop you nowadays. They're, they don't even think. No That's because Iverson's offense was elite. So there's a difference when you can do what he can do versus what Colin Sexton's a very good player. His jumper's not quite there yet. Yes, he can get to his spot on the floor wherever he wants to get. Strength and speed and athleticism was his big thing where he had, he was so much better than other guards in college. My point is, he's not. Like look like you see Aaron Gordon, is it his name? Eric Eric Gordon. I hate him because he looks like a meatball out there scoring. He has no business scoring. Yeah, but he's so his, differently now than he did in college. So Colin Sexton is a different type of player, but he has the same kind of build, maybe a little bit more athletic of a build because Colin Sexton's an athlete guy, like jump high, dunk on people, whatever. But he has that similar build. He doesn't have Gordon's jumper. So, like, you see Gordon get to the bucket and have all these athletic layups and whatever else because he has the threat of shooting. I don't think Sexton's jumper is there yet. He made like four threes against Arizona in that game. One was a bank three. One was like a 35-footer at the buzzer, I think, before halftime. So, I mean. I don't think anybody in the draft's jumper. I don't. I can't tell you an athlete who's had a jumper come out of the draft in forever. No, there's people who are specialists. I mean, that's how basketball is now. Either way, if like you like Dell Curry coming out was a shooter. I mean, it wasn't like he was a defensive stopper or you know what I mean. That it's like some people get drafted because they're three and D. Some people get drafted because they're a really good lead guard, point guard. Some people get drafted because they're center. There's good shooters out there. I mean, that's Grayson Allen from Duke. Like he got drafted in the first round. Who would have thought he would have been the first round pick? And who's he twenty three or twenty two? Oh, like he didn't go to Milwaukee. D. Vincenzo. No, I, I saw a picture of it. Oh, uh, Utah, which is actually oh, that's right because be. Utah had that stigmatism forever about drafting only white guys. But they had the rookie of the year. Well, who should probably should have been rookie of the year last year, Mitchell, know, and he's definitely not white. It depends. <laughs> okay. And. I mean, first of all, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying he's when he's you not watch, that quintessential guy. I forgot he went to Utah until I saw a picture of him today with a Utah jersey, and I was like, oh, it makes sense. They picked a the white guy. But when you, <laughs> see, that was the thing when he got drafted. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I guess they had to. But I'm like, I don't know why no, I think they had to. No, they didn't. I don't know why you just think that. Like you just think that. Like, <laughs> it felt like well, that's about right for so. Like he got drafted. I was like, oh yeah, that's a good pick. And I'm like, I don't even know why. Not a good right. pick, but it makes sense. For I Utah. mean, it, it seemed like it was like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I can see that. And I'm like, well, I don't know why, but they can use him. He's tough and dirty. You know, he can do something. Now, homeboy from he, Villanova. I don't. Now, I hope he's good for Milwaukee. I don't see him being good. But I'm only basing that off of I love players who shine in the tournament. You're talking about Divincenzo. Yeah. I love players that. I'm a Divincenzo fan from way back, like years back, before anybody. That's the thing. The funniest shit to me is like me watching college basketball. I know about all these guys years before, even in high school. So when someone like that plays well in a national championship game, and everyone goes nuts, and they're like, "Who would have thunk it? This guy's out of nowhere!" Like I've seen him score thirty before. Like I'm not surprised. Yeah, but you're different than everybody. Else. World Cup, NCAA tournament are some of the most, probably the two most popular sporting events besides the Super Bowl, period. You don't have to watch a second of any of those sports to participate yeah, in yeah. either one. Same thing, with, did you say NCAA tournament? NCAA tournament, yeah. all that. So it's like... Super Bowl, those are probably the three things where if casual fans watch, like casual fans probably not watching NHL playoffs. Some people might be, but oh, not I'm like the Super Bowl playoffs. But no, I'm saying I'm watching NFL. Casual sports fan, not like casual hockey fan. I'm talking about like 
You said NCAA tournament, Super Bowl, or I'm going to add Super Bowl, and World Cup, you can watch without knowing much. So what I'm saying is I agree because those people probably not watching NHL playoffs. They probably not watching MLB playoffs. I can't wait. I'm loving baseball right now. I am hitting at the exact same time. I want the Dodgers to be trashed the entire year. I don't want them to get good at all. All right. I don't know why you say that. Because it doesn't make a, it doesn't make any sense when you're good now. The obvious, first of all, the Astros are winning the World Series. That's just period. I'm a little they dis- I'm disgusted are with the Astros. Literally destroying people. They are the be- they are phenomenal. All right. It's hands down. They're gonna win it. No, it's yeah, not they true. It's one hundred percent. I mean, they down, should, but that's not true. All right, they're going to win it. Number one, they don't play in a real ballpark. Number two, <laughs> baseball players whose career seems like they're over go there and start throwing 100 miles an hour again. Something suspect about that. All right. Super, super suspect right. about that. I mean, this is not a story of me making this up. This is in the media. Yeah, but this is Justin like- Verlander's uh, velocity had gone down like four or five years in a row. He goes back. He's four miles an hour faster than what he was when he was. You'd be surprised what you pull out of your body. Pause when you get to a team that's winning. When okay. you're on the Detroit Tigers and y'all trash, I need you to stop. Nobody. That's not how it works. Uh, I'm not, um, you'd be surprised. No. Okay. All right. You can get better when you're on a team. I mean, this environment's better. You're winning. You pull something out of you. All right. And you become fire again. Okay. You can do that. If you. Right. You can do know, that. I don't know what that. All right, man. It's like when you, you go make a miraculous me. shot in basketball. Go get, cool. Not a shot. If you throw on four miles an hour faster for an entire season, that's more than adrenaline. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> it's like it's like what's his name? Um, you punt the ball ninety yards because you were like super hyped that day because your team's good, and you if you punt it good, you win the game. Fine. I'm saying like but if you do it for an entire like, two seasons or a season, as I mean something going on. I'm saying like players that like. They be great here, and then they're like, "I'm going to chase the bag here," and then they become trash. Uh, yeah, but baseball is not like that, though, really. And in baseball, like other sports, I feel in baseball you should all get better, just like that. If you come from like the Detroit Tigers, who were just going downhill or already downhill, and you go to somebody better who's like on the way up, you get you could get better. Like you get better. You're obviously I could. It's just a natural thing. Like it's not natural to throw four miles an hour faster on average. You're talking about like game to game performance. I'm talking about effort. You put a different effort into okay. something that. So you're if you're a hitter body. and then you go to another team and say you were That's like different. Say you were like two. You were like two seventy and now you're hitting three three hundred. Fine. But if you went from like ten home runs and now you're hitting fifty home runs, there's something going on. That's a, look, the hitting's different. No, Base, it's not. Hitting is different than pitching. Okay. No, it's not. What? What are you talking about? In terms of what the argument you're making, it is four miles an hour is like mind blown that you got that much. He he decreased in four you're straight right. years. One mile, like one mile an hour each year, to the point where he was from like average fastball was ninety six, and now it's ninety two. And then he goes to Houston four years later, and it's back to ninety seven. Uh. What? I mean, it's not in not in one start for the entire season. Hitting is different than getting better at pitching. It just is. But, but it's not getting better. He's like forty years old. Yeah, but I'm saying <laughs> you said somebody hit ten this season. Next season hits fifty. No, no, not next season or whatever. You get traded at the deadline. You were like, okay, over here, and then you get traded, and then all of a sudden you like. Matt Kemp kind of has those as a hitter seasons. Matt Kemp has no business being good. He is somehow. But it's not because the Dodgers are doing something suspect that people think like, oh, there might be something going on. Again, this didn't come from me. This came from, like, the media. Because Verlander's not the only guy. They had some other guy. I don't know if it was Morton. Morton was throwing, like, 91-92 for the Pirates or whoever forever. And he's 30-something years old. And then he went to, what you call it, now he's throwing 97. Like, what are we doing here? There's... There's, you don't believe in momentum, and you don't believe in effort and stuff like that. M- well, momentum is not real. Momentum is real in life because it's physics. It's like? Momentum is not real in sports. It's being surrounded by people that make you better. Now, baseball players, I think baseball might be maybe the hardest to be individually great. I believe in mental, um, uh, I don't know what, or spiritual... What, I, I believe in feeling better when you're somewhere else, but that only lasts for so long. Oh, you're right. That's my point. I.e., the Cavs. You can be trash, and then on the Cavs. That's not what I'm talking about, but yeah. I'm saying Tristan Thompson, he's trash. He's trash. Yes. But that one season, 
Oh, he was yeah, like, okay. Every offensive bad. rebound there was. J.R. Smith, you're like, okay, it might be okay. Bad. Because you have that feeling of the environment you're in. Once that environment starts turning weird and poison, everybody is trash. All right. Verlander. I don't believe that it lasts for an entire season. It lasts for like a week or I mean, a day I don't even know how, many, how long was Verlander there last year for the regular season? How much left of the regular season was there before they went to the freaking playoffs? I think like two months or a month. It was like a month. He got traded like after that. the deadline because nobody wanted his contract. Yeah. And it was then, a waiver addition, I think. And then ball pitched. Phenomenal. Yeah, because he started he had reason. 97 again. He had a reason to pitch. But that's not how physics works. I, I know that. Performance is one thing. Like, in terms of, like, I'm playing better. Not in terms of, like, my arm all of a I sudden is that. 97 miles an hour. That's different. Those are You're talking about, like, uh, emotion versus, like, physical. Those are two completely different things. He got a bow flex. Like, if, like, okay. Like, if, like right. if Tiger Woods, when he was hitting all them women, if he was hitting it like 330 and now he's paused and now he's hitting it 280 and then like he starts hitting women again and he hits it like 400, I mean, that's not <laughs> – something else might be going on. He might be Confidence. Oh, okay. If you smash in there by your confidence. Physical, not, physical, not mental, allows you to do things like feats of strength, not like right. I'm not mentally better. off their children. All right. I I mean, it's a pretty big deal to throw 92 and then 97. That's a pretty big difference. But then you then you got to say the same about LeBron in 15 years, and still and better than other years. Yeah, but LeBron's never been down. That's the difference. He's never been down. He's always been okay. He's never been (laughs) down, but he's supposed to be going down by now. Yeah, but that's why people say he's the best ever. He's a freak of nature. Ver- these other guys we're talking about went down and then came back up by going to a specific like I said it's not only Verlander there's other pitchers the same thing has happened to when people are like hmm, yeah but let, let what okay. is going on in Houston what's up uh, Prince when he was with uh, what Toronto where he was the balling he go to work artist formerly known as what he goes to talk uh, about? Price Prince oh boy pitcher oh David Price David Price <laughs> then he goes to Red Sox he's got a trash All yeah. right. and now I think he's good again I think I think he's okay now. It happens, huh? Nah, not like that. Well, I don't know why you go bad going to the Red Sox. I, that's such a baseball town. You come from Toronto, you go to you should get better. That's whatever he's going through is completely different than someone at the end of their career going to Houston and all of a sudden being super good. They did the same thing with uh, Pittsburgh Pirate Man. Now he's a lot younger, so if they refine something in his delivery, it makes sense. Whoever the Cole Cole Bullet Man, what's his name? Cole something. Cole Garrett about. Cole. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, where's he at now? Colorado? Houston. No, Houston. Oh, Houston. Oh, okay. He was so he was a super high prospect, first round pick early. And, you know, he came into the league throwing ninety eight. And then he's younger than Verlander, so it makes a little bit more sense that he's recovered. But his, you know, performance started waning and blah blah blah. Now, granted, Pittsburgh, not the greatest town, goes to Houston this year in a trade in offseason, immediately back throwing ninety eight and so when he was with the Pirates, even when he was throwing super hard when he first came in the league, he averaged eight. I looked this up today. For what reason, I have no idea, but I looked it up. He was averaging eight Ks per nine innings pitched. Houston this year, 12. So you're and he's s- never had a season higher than like 8.7. How do you go from 8.5 to 12 just by switch? What? So like I said, he's on PEDs or something. No, I'm not saying that. These stories have been written. Uh-huh. I'm just saying like. It might be something to be like. Hey. Well, whatever he's doing, Kershaw needs a dose. Okay. Right. A dosage. Kershaw's career might be over, so. That's a possibility. Although he was throwing 92 in the last start, which is better than 87. So yeah. It don't matter if you throw 92 if you still lose. No one's winning throwing 87, all right? I saw somebody no. throw a, a fly in a minor league. It just went like <laughs> All right. Yes, he threw one pitch. Uh, everybody, everything else in the draft good? What's his name? Text me. He said we could give him a call. Everybody else good? I know you was mad about Zaire Smith going to the Sixers. Oh, yeah. I just not. I wasn't mad about it. I just don't understand why the Suns. Like, you can. If it was a really, really good team. Like, if the Celtics traded a player plus a first round pick to get something where they're like one piece away, I totally understand it. But when you're as bad as the Suns are and you end up with Smith at 16, who some people like statisticians had in the top five. And might be, even though a slightly different player than Bridges, might be just as good or better than Bridges down the road. And you still have to give up a first round pick when you're trying to get better. Now, I don't think that first round pick is until like 2021 or something. I don't know. 
know what better means. Why are you giving a first round pickup when you're a bad team? That there's no value there. Oh yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, I definitely agree with that. Now, and that's me Sons saying like have... I like Mikael Bridges as a player. Hey, he's a good player. I, absolutely. He's but, a winner. But the fact is, I think he'll... the guys in the in the Villanova program know what they're doing. Yeah, Somehow, he's gonna be good. <laughs> Jay Wright has those dudes. That's crazy, crazy he's atmosphere be a there. Fourteen. Something. But if you have Smith, who might be just as good or better potentially, and you're giving packaging him with a first round pick for a bad team, and that makes no sense. I don't. I just don't agree with bad teams, like you said, in the top ten, top fifteen, making deal. Like you don't got any business making deals, trading off players like that. Like you said, statistically wise, as supposed to be possibly phenomenal. You have no business doing anything. Suns have no business. Smith is the most athletic player in the those most most athletic wing in the draft. Might be the best defensive player. On the wing in the draft, starting to get better as a shooter. You already so if you drafted him, you already have your three and D guy who's super athletic. And Mike Mikael Bridges is athletic too, but you're trading him for someone who is, might be end up being the same thing. I think Mik- and Mikael you Bridges is a, is a better, like a, a better PJ Tucker. I think he's no, he'll be, he'll be. He should be what PJ Michael. Br- this is what Michael 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 is whatever. It Michael you call or Michael? I don't know. You can call him either way. What he's going to be? He's he's a rich man's Robert Covington, and Covington is a very valuable player in the NBA because he's a three and D guy. That's exactly what he is. So Covington when, ain't that good so, to me. Yes, he is. He has looked like he looks like that guy you see. Like he's a whoa, perfect he's complimentary. Like, but that's what Mikael Bridges is. No one expects him to be a star. They want him to be the third or fourth guy on a championship team. Yeah, but I think he's going to be like a better Trevor Ariza. Like players like that. Like way better than them. Not an all star, but way better than them. Way better than Ariza is a stretch because when Ariza was in like his prime, Ariza was really good. I don't Coving, love that. Covington is a perfect player for any. Like if Covington was with LeBron. Bruh. I don't know, man. You go with LeBron, you go like this. No. No, the not first year? You not like when that. you're like Get a guy. Bag, then you go like not that. when you're a guy who he's not a head case like J.R. Smith or not or like doesn't play defense. He plays defense and shoots. That's Le- the perfect player for LeBron. You put him in the corner, LeBron do whatever you do, wide open, three game. LeBron makes people nervous. It's too hard to play with. Like if you're on the Sixers, if that's the case, then he should be way better than what he is on the Sixers if that's all he needs to do. What do you mean? I think in that system. He should probably exactly what you're saying. Play defense and shoot. He doesn't. He's not. He doesn't do that consistently enough to be like, whoa, JJ Redick this season. Probably his best year in the NBA. He did every single thing you said. He doesn't play any defense. He's the might be the worst defensive guard in the league. Oh no, uh, uh, Kyle Korver uh, the worst defensive guard in the league. Well, said, was there much difference between those two guys? Uh, no, I have an argument about them. Too. <laughs> I mean, you're right. So Michael Bridges might be the better version of Robert Covington, right? Who he is plays defense. very coveted in the and NBA. So so. Yes, that's literally the second <laughs> most uh, second most coveted position in the NBA right now is you have your or maybe third dominant point guard. You need a dominant lead guard, and you need and you need someone like LeBron, a lead uh, type A personality um, wing to dominate scoring, dominate whatever. And then the most third most important position is not center, even though Houston man. It, that's becoming the new thing to be in the NBA. What's Houston man's name? Is going to get paid? Hard? Oh, um, the center. Capella. Yeah. You could never remember his name. So he that position might now be coming the third most important thing because he made Houston a lot better. If they didn't have him, like if they would have had JaVale McGee, like put switch him and JaVale McGee on those two teams, oh, Golden Lord. State might beat everyone undefeated. by 100. Yeah, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, and and two years ago or last year, you wouldn't even have been like, you know, like Capella, who? So uh, he that was pretty good last year. He was going, but he got hurt. Well, you understand what I'm saying? No one would think like, oh, he's the difference between a team that's going to win. If he if, if he was on Cavs, dear God, mm. bruh. I don't know, man. I, I don't think Cavs is a good example. Though. What do you yeah, mean? If you would put Covington on the Warriors, <laughs> all right. No, they don't. For what? I'm saying LeBron has the ability to draw people and then find shooters and also pick and roll. Uh, tall man runs to the rim and gets more dunks than. That's why he gets so many dunks because he has Harden. Same Harden. Harden draws the oh, yeah, defense perfect. just like LeBron. He's Same thing. Like you, uh, but like we said before, if Capella's on another team, he'd be trash. Not Except on Warriors. another team, just I'm a saying, team that Capella's doesn't have the does lead, have a point guard or a they big, a or a guard. main lead player like Harden. So again, it's like a. And then the next most important position after that is three and D. So. 
But Zaire Smith may have already been that. So I don't, I don't forget our bet either. Um, yeah, Aiton won't be injured. So oh, yeah, be injured. you can owe me lunch. Summer League, injured. Hopefully back by All-Star break. Um, oh, I was going to talk about uh, Virgil Abloh joint Louis oh. Vuitton oh, Avia. Uh, sucks. I, see, to me, like... Somebody looked that Avia sneaker up to figure that out, and then everybody jumped in that bandwagon. I, myself, came off the top with my thing. Okay. All right. I mean, it wasn't like it was a stretch. Like, no, it was. What was a stretch? I mean, it wasn't like you. I mean, it looks like that, too, a Jordan 3. But no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I said <laughs> Leacock Sportif or whatever. It lo- oh, yeah. it definitely well, looks the red one the definitely white looks and the red one looks like Yes. That. Definitely looks like a old white like French or English tennis shoe. Well it looks like what's that one? And British Elise? and British Knights. And maybe Elise too. They look like Elise too. Elise was is like and really British more Knights. known for like that low top basketball shoe with that basketball on it. I don't know what the line is between like between inspiration and plagiarism. Like, I don't know what the First of all, uh, is, are we convinced he's uh, deserving of the? Now I understand you love what he did with the shoes, the Nike, the ten. Oh yeah, yeah. But are we convinced he's a designer worthy of? Okay. And I'm not trying to seem like uh, luxury goods should be put on a pedestal because they're humans just like everybody else. And you know, I don't <laughs> care that like, like certain people in life we know are talented singers, songwriters professional athletes we know there's things they do that we couldn't but is like now maybe like brad pitt has qualities that we don't but like you see some actors and i'm like i could totally do that job (laughs) maybe not in a play or something but definitely in a movie where you get like 55 takes or whatever there's definitely stuff i could do like let's put it this way i'm closer to being jerry ferrara than than uh, uh, LeBron or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, (laughs) like there's, so what I'm saying is like people that, but those are celebrities and people worship them. So regular humans are closer to being certain things than they are other things. And like a designer for LV, I figure like to me, that's something that like anybody could do. Um, You don't necessarily, (laughs) listen, he has, he has a degree in architecture and design or whatever and a, oh, and a master's we ain't got that i get oh. it he did his time i'm not saying he's not deserving of it what i'm saying is is his work all saying. that no, it's, not. <laughs> I mean, it's not should people worship him as a designer like no. i get that what he did with the 10 nike shoes is something that no one's ever done but how are you able to do that with the nike 10 and then you go to lv and your stuff is so underwhelming i don't, I don't get it it, would, would they not allow you to do something similar? Like chop up a shoe they had before? I will say it is underwhelming. It's, I'm like, Bruh, this is It your looks thing? like a Laycock Sportif or if you want to call it uh, Avia, whatever shoe. Is yes. it Avia or Avia? I think it's Avia. You know what's know. funny is, I think with, I remember people wearing more Avia basketball than Puma basketball. Like Clyde Drexler had a signature sneaker with Avia. Like Puma basketball didn't really exist after I mean, the harder. Clydes went out. Um, Vince Carter, what did he wear? He had Puma basketball. That was the last huh? basketball athlete. What are you talking about? Vince Carter was signature sneakers of Puma basketball. When? His first, like, four or five years. Oh, was he so, like, shocks and all that was after he was? Yeah, like, that was way after. Oh, I thought yeah, he was yeah. Nike from the beginning. Oh, no, he was Puma Cell. Like, he was Puma from the go. And then that was it. Never again. Like, that was uh, it. Um, really? I, Is that I real? Agree. Yeah, no, 20% fact. I thought you knew that. I mean, I, maybe at the time that's a long time ago Vince Carter came in the league in 96 I think I do agree 95 96 it's hard to say bro he came in the league the same time Charles Woodson did and was still playing last year I think wasn't he yeah he's about 40 now 41 Bruh. Um, I think I feel like okay I feel like you're right about the fact that anybody could do it if given the opportunity if you have some type of design skills, I feel like it's going to be paid a little bit more attention to because he's black, you know, obviously, and he's going to have the attention more of Kanye. And I'm not saying it's like an, that. It, it's like the end for him. That's not, I, you know, no, I'm not no, trying no, to make no, it seem no, like no, that no, either. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just like, I'm just like, it's bruh. not, 
it's not to me what I saw on that runway show, whatever, wasn't what people know you for. Like I feel like even if I was Louis Vuitton, I'd be like, we didn't bring you here to just design stuff that we could have designed. Like it doesn't look like anything that isn't already on those runway shows in the first place. Like it has no type of if you want to say urban appeal or anything like that. Now you want to create a sneaker that's built off the backs of other sneakers. Okay, whatever. All right. But the shoe itself, first of all, it says like stuff on like advanced technology. I don't know what type of advanced technology you put inside of a Louis Vuitton sneaker. All right. Like <laughs> it says that on the tongue. Having a Louis Vuitton sneaker with advanced technology for you don't even play basketball and all that. I don't get it. All I right. don't. I definitely don't remember that right there. Yeah. Come on, man. You remember those? I don't remember that. Dunking on a tumble in them. I don't um, <laughs> And the Puma cell in the back, one of the hardest <laughs> materials on earth. Um, I have no idea. No recollection. I don't see it being a. <sighs> um, four. There was five, six versions of this shoe. Yeah. You don't remember Vince Carter wearing Pumas. No. Okay, man. Now this says the cell six. Yeah. He if I saw out. that, I would have been like Jennifer, uh, what's her name? Jennifer. Rebecca Lobo? No. What's the one who made the movie The Cell? Wasn't it? Oh, right. Vince Jennifer Vaughn. Lopez. And the, like Jennifer Lopez and Vince Vaughn, part six? Trash movie. <laughs> right. like, uh, what? I, yeah. No. I they made six versions of a shoe I don't remember. And it says that this ad came out the same year as the other ad. Did they make all six in one year? I think he won the dunk contest <laughs> when Puma sells. I don't think he was with Nike uh, yet back then. Bruh. Hey, man. He was the, he was the originator. Well, not the originator. Obviously, Clyde was, but still. Um, and it's not a bad-looking basketball shoe, to be honest with you, especially for that time. It's just we weren't going to buy a Puma basketball shoe. Like, I think I might have seen those once ever in person, and that might have been like a Ross type thing. And you try to, like, squeeze the cell. It's literally a rock. It's like when they would make generic Nikes at, like, Kmart, and they had fake air bubbles, and it was basically just plastic. That's basically what cell was. Um, yeah, trash. Okay. If I don't remember it, it's trash. Um, I'm going to try to call. the last time <laughs> this is just a task um but yeah like you said i don't think virgil is gonna bring anything that we expect him to bring to louis vuitton and the shoe is nonsense like hello hey mouse you you what's up what's good boy chilling you got a minute Yes, sir. Um, appreciate you coming back on again. You know, last week I know we had a little problem, got cut off, but uh, yeah, yeah, all good, all good. Yeah, so you know we got uh Mouse Jones on here, like I said, host of uh Pull Up, host of I'll apologize later, host of the Heat yeah. Man, Woman Haters podcast, one of my favorite podcasts personally. Uh, I don't talk about it, we just rap. Oh, you already <laughs> know. Uh, how was a uh, BET experience? Yeah. BET BET Wing was lit. I mean, I, I see that you've labeled yourself now the greatest host on earth. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely. At this point, at this point, like, is there anything to argue? I mean, I don't have nothing to argue it. I mean, I saw a lot of the IG. I saw you being tagged in a lot of stuff, man. You definitely doing something out there. I'm trying. Like, I'm just trying, man. I'm just happy to be seen. You already know. So, actually, you know, one thing. What? Uh, so I know we didn't get to it last time, but you know, like I said, uh, how we even connected was, you know, through top five Jordans and we never got to ask yeah. you what you thought your what you thought top five Jordans were. Definitely so top five definitely gotta be start with the uh for me the the uh true blue threes. True blue threes. Hmm. True blue threes. Okay. Um bread ones. Okay. Um are these in order or are you just are you just coming no, up? It's right no is it a, yeah, yeah. True Blues is my favorite Jordan of all time. Oh, okay, all right. Um, yeah, that's my favorite Jordan of all time. It's just that colorway is just too smooth. Um, but then yeah, the bread, the bread one. Then the bread eleven. Then cement threes. And then just just for the, the sentimental value it has to me, the obsidian fifteen. Okay, so you scoffed at my fourteen and you put a fifteen in it. <laughs> There, you, you literally have no reason to put those in. <laughs> you literally have no reason. The you reason, have zero reason the reason why you put a, a Jordan last shot fourteen is because it's the very last Jordan sneaker he played in with the Chicago Bulls. He never played in an Obsidian. He, he did it, but it has. To, it was my first Jordan. 
Yeah, well, see, see, that's the thing. Okay, that makes sense because I was going to ask. That was, I think, one of the questions that I asked today is, "What was the shoe that did it for you?" But it, you answered it early. Well, the shoe that did it for me was the True Blue Three. My, for, I, but you know, my parents were a little broker than you than other parents, so my cousin had the True Blue Threes. And I seen them and was like, oh, Lord, those are hard. <laughs> the first Jordan I got was the Obsidian 14. Did, um, how come we never see you in any Adidas? Fuck Adidas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't rock with that bullshit. None of it. Why not? Nah. Um, well, number one, I never, I never, ever, ever been a fan of Adidas. Like, ever. Like, I remember my parents got me shell toes because it was like two for 40 or two for 80 shit. And I was so fucking pissed off. Like, I've never, <laughs> I've never ever, ever fucked with Adidas, like, at all. Oh, see, I thought you were. And would then, have... um, you know, then when I got into the industry, I built connections with Nike. So, oh, okay. That, it, it just made the most sense. Oh, okay. Well, then, you know, I mean, that kind of goes to my next question. Then, I mean, like, I, you know, you in definitely in the industry and surrounded by creators and music and right, influence. Right. Is Jay Z? Can Jay Z actually do something with Puma basketball? I, hell yeah, he can. Um, not with me though. But <laughs> and I'm a Jay Z fan. Like there's Jay Z words tattooed on my body. But nah, bro, I ain't, I ain't going to Puma, man. Nah, I think Jay-Z could have done something with Puma in general, but putting him, assigning him to Puma just basketball, that's a rough one. I mean, anything is possible, and it's Jay-Z, so you can't count him out until he tells it. Is, do you still consider, I mean, I know you're from New York and everything, are New York cats still considered fly? Like, Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You sure about that? Say it again. I said, so you sure? I feel like the rest of the world are caught up to like New York when it comes Hell to fashion no. and everything. I, I, Hell no. You ever seen anybody outside of New York in Air Force Ones? Uh, Air Force Ones are kind of played out. Man. Air Force Ones have been played out for about 10 years. Man. That's not that's not true. They, they, took a, they took a hit. They took a hit, but they back. No. They back in a big way. You ain't wearing no Air Force Ones, though. I do. I wear. I don't do. I don't do. I don't do lows, and I don't do three quarters. I wear. I wear all the highs, though. Uh, you uh, you know. So like I said, you know, always on the move, things like that. When you on the move and stuff, what you usually rocking? Runners. Uh, if I'm yeah, like right now, I just finished recording. I got on a pair of uh, Vapor Maxes. Um, love those. The the, the uh, I don't even know what the uh, ice. Icy blue. Oh, shit. Okay. Right. They sent me the dust to dorm pack, so I'm wearing the lightest blue of them. Oh, okay. So you don't got to go get raffle tickets and wait in line to cop sneakers. You get stuff sent to you. I'm a whole, I'm an adult, man. That's all I say when it comes to that. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't do none of that. You don't cop on apps. You don't do anything like that. I'm an adult. That, oh, is that an adult like with, with privilege or... <laughs> You just ain't doing it. That's different. You can't say that. Hey, you can, you can put whatever you want to put on it. I'm an adult. And I tell you one thing, as a grown-ass man, I will not be standing in anybody's line. I stood in one line my whole life, and that was in 2011 for the Concords. Oh, yeah, you got to do that. Yeah, I mean, we ain't standing in our lines anymore anyways, but we still got to, like, participate in raffles and other nonsense like that. Yeah, just no, to try to get ra something. a raffle my dick. Hell no, I'm not doing that. No, hell no. <laughs> Fuck that. Um, so like I was saying, um out here doing your thing, like obviously, you know, uh is there anything that you've been looking for or that you that you need? Sneaker wise? Yeah. Uh what am I excited for? Uh I like the new ones. I like the I like those those ones. Those, those I, I feel like they're like a pastel colorway or whatever. I, I like those. Um, anything I'm really excited for? Oh uh, nah, I can't say I can't say anything I'm super excited for that I can't like get my hands on when I want. How was uh? How did you actually say what? Say it again. Oh, I, I thought you had said something. At what point did you, you know, I mean, I feel like, you know, sneakers have their up and downs and things like that. Did you have to get, like, at one point, were you not able to get what you wanted, or is that until you got into the industry? Like, um, I'm trying to think. The last thing I got that I couldn't get when I wanted it, ooh, you know what it was? It was those LeBron, those, um, 
those Zoom Generation ones, they came out like that that uh that green, that St. Mary St. Vincent oh, green. Oh, okay. Yeah, I still don't get my hands on those shit. I'm tight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure somebody got I'm you. Tight. I'm sure somebody got you. If all you gotta do is ask. Hey, listen, I'm hoping. I'm hoping some somebody somebody listening is gonna hit me like, yo, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta tell them what size you need then. Oh, I need a ten. I need a ten. A it's ten. Yeah, I got right. that in the ten. Hit Mouse Jones. Oh, okay. Please hit Mouse Jones. I need that. What? Uh, I know you. You from? You go back to Virginia often? I know you from Virginia, right? No, no, I'm not from Virginia. I, I was stationed in Virginia. Oh, okay, okay. You go back there often? I used to. Uh, I've been back to since then. I've been. I mean, I left Virginia on some um, pretty unruly terms. So, but I did. I have been back. Like, I want to say like twice. Been back like twice. Uh, oh, okay. DTL, uh, I used to be in DTL uh, all the time. Oh, okay. Shout out to them. Did you? Uh, you know, like I said, you were talking about back going back to New York. Talk. We were out there probably last year, and I'll tell you one thing that I didn't see anybody wearing anymore is phone posits. Uh. Phone posits is a very hood specific thing. Like all the hood <laughs> niggas wear like phone posits. Like old hood niggas, like thirty to forty five year olds wear phone posits. I don't. I just can't stand no fucking phone. <laughs> <laughs> so Nike's only for you. No other brands or what? Uh, I fuck with anything Nike. I fuck with. Um, I'm trying to think, is it? Because you I said mean, you I get a bag. Probably not. I ain't gonna hold you. Like Nike just really fucks. With, like I, I just really fuck with the the silhouettes and what. Like they just super comfortable. Like, uh, yeah. If they ain't, if they ain't giving me a bag, like I know last year, shout out to Karen Simple. I hosted Karen Simple Day. And, you know, that was sponsored by Adidas. So I, that, you know, I had to wear a pair of shell toes. And, Bullshit like that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, pretty much. If it ain't, it ain't like this past weekend, I had to wear, oh, I had to wear one of those fucking lunch lady Puma shoes. The Puma <laughs> sponsored the celebrity dodgeball game. It was straight. But you're not going out of your way to pick anything up, New Balance or Puma or no, nothing new. Shout out to my man Zeus, though. My man Zeus, you know, he's a trainer. Uh, my trainer, and he just got, you know, he's, he's over there sponsored by New Balance. So shout out to that. But uh, yeah, I'm not so feeling so. You know, I see other way New Balance. At what point did you, you know, like we said, we always talk about, you know, growing up, you know, having that opportunity to finally get. And I know you said that, like I remember you last time we talked to you, you said you skipped school and stuff to get to get the Obsidian 15. Yeah, to get the last shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is there any point in time where you see yourself, you know, not, you know, caring about sneakers as much, you know, as you no. do now? Mm-mm. We have that. No, as, we have just, that. It's, it's just a staple of my. For me personally, um, it's a staple of my fly. Like every everything I do is all based on my sneakers. So, you know, even not being sweats, the sweats gotta sit a certain way on my sneakers or even my jeans. <laughs> everything like my whole is like everybody's outfit be surrounded about my different stuff. Like old niggas outfits be surrounded by their color. Like certain niggas outfits be surrounded around the shirt or the belt or that everything. Like, um, so, that with us. so then Kanye never it never swayed you to even try any Yeezys, For what? huh? Or fucking what? Oh. I don't do David Michelle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're not into the, like none of the knit. So none of the knit stuff is for you. Is all leather or suede or whatever? It's none of what? Like all the knits that all these companies are using that that. Uh, uh, well, well, I love I love the I love the fly net material that Nike does. So I uh, like I love that like fly net races. I fucking spent. That, I think that's what put me on Nike's uh uh, uh fucking uh radar because like when the fly net dropped, I was buying all of those and posting all of those shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, see. I think they you they utilize the fly net superbly on vapor maxes. Like I can't get enough of vapor maxes. Oh. Yeah, I'm wearing them right now. No socks or nothing. Like, this is perfect. Those joints are every day, every go thing. Uh, I was going to ask you, do you like, did you, uh, did you like the Nas album? Not at all. I actually just got done trashing the Nas album. (laughs) (laughs) Awful. And did you hear Tiana's album? I did. And it hurt my soul. Awful. Yeah. Right. I couldn't wait for yeah, it. I was like, I was like, I want to ask Mouse what he thought about him before I hear anything that you do. I'm obviously, <laughs> I'm, you know, check out the podcast, check out everything. But yeah, I, no, I, I didn't even. It was so bad. I didn't even talk about it. Like I didn't talk about. It. I just tweeted about it when I was in LA, listening to it. Like I, because I like, you know, I like live tweets when I'm listening to the album. And um, yeah, that shit was bad. She was bad. 
I think it was really bad. She, she gave up too much control to Kanye, and yeah, he I, ran her smack out into a brick wall. I'm sitting there um, like, it's, it's two really good songs, you know, like two really good songs. That's like I I see myself listening to, um, like on repeat. But yeah, as a as a whole, the, the, it was called Keep That Same Energy, and the energy wasn't that kept. So nah, I think I think one thing that I've learned is Kanye production is strictly for Kanye, like yeah. It's well, not... no, no. I won't say that. I won't say that. Well, push your album was fine. Maybe I'll agree to that now. Okay. Like I'm not like I won't say that his whole career because he's been like amazing records that don't sound like him to many people. Um, and he's also like made, and he's also like made records that don't sound like um the original record. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what I'll say like what he did with um what was that fucking record he did for. Uh, it was on Rick Ross's album Mastermind. Oh, you talking um, about um? It's 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 big song. It's Kanye, it's Rick Ross, and DJ Mustard actually did the original beat. And then once Kanye touched it, it was sanctified. That's name. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. There's mean. a lot of stuff like that though. That you know, originally someone else is is building it up, and then he just right. I don't want to say so, he steals so it, but he so, takes yeah, it for so his I'm own. Say him. <laughs> Kanye as a Kanye as a producer is probably amazing. Kanye as a creative director, we might not need that. But nah. Tiana definitely didn't need that. No, nah, she didn't. She's way too talented to talented. I, I thought her talent was gonna be showcased more, but it was it was Kanye. It was it yeah. got took over and I was so disappointed in that's, it. And that's what I don't like about any of these projects. They seem very like Kanye is imposing himself and I I'm good on that. I'm good on like I'm not gonna listen to you by yourself, so I don't wanna hear you. Don't try to sneak on the shit. I want to hear. Nah. Uh, so wait, you, I thought you liked Pusha's album. Like, I'm talking. To, I love Push album. Yeah, love Pusha album. Good. Love Push album. But I'm not. But you know, I didn't like the Nas album. I didn't like the Cudi album. I didn't like the Kanye album. Okay. Yeah. And see, I mean, I didn't yeah. listen. I didn't listen to Kanye just because. You know, I'm still uh, something about. I mean, after all the stuff Kanye said and stuff, and I'm. I you know I'm just not really feeling Kanye. I listen to everything around it, but the one thing about Pusha album is. Push is going to be pushing no matter what. He's going to rap about the same thing exactly. all the time. Tiana has, I mean, so much far talent that we haven't seen yet due to either Def Jam holding it back or whatever. So I feel like we haven't fully seen her potential. I mean, Nas didn't change anything. I haven't listened to Nas' whole album yet, so I can't comment. And I've only heard like the first three songs, but he's not going to change for Kanye. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but, it's pretty much the same thing with Tiana. It's a few good songs. Cohesively, it doesn't doesn't no. fit doesn't it, sit well. His bars did not go with the production. Like Nas sounded like it sounded like the beats. It sounded like he rapped the bars first, and then Kanye made the beat to go with the <laughs> yeah. bars. Like it sounded so off. Like the very first song or whatever, I was like, "This is awful." All right, Adam and Adam and Eve is dope. I like that song, and you know the uh, one, top shot the kid is good. Say what? The top shot the kid is good. Yeah, that one's pretty good, but like. Other than that, and the seven song thing, I'm sorry, it's not working. Like I'm getting through the album so quick, I'm like, this is it. Like next thing you know, it's it's full back to the first album, to the first song. Anyways, right. At what point, like I remember you told us the first time we talked to you, you know, how you had made that connection with B and T and stuff like that. Is there like anything to where that you feel like that was that moment to where you knew like you were on your direct path to being like a new voice in culture, Um, urban music, anything. Probably, I don't know if I've reached that yet. Um, probably like you know, hosting the Staples Center that was huge. That was um, huge. Yeah, that was huge. Eighteen thousand people. That was huge. Um, but I don't know if I've had that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I've had it yet. I, I haven't had that. I don't know if I've had that moment yet. But I'm like very cognizant of it though. Like I'm very cognizant of when it happens. I'll know. Oh, this is this is it. At what point do you say? I mean, I always you know, obviously you know. I've been, you know, aware of you for a while, but then, like, obviously, I listen to Brilliant Idiots all the time, and when you're right. on there, it's just, you know, it's just always dope, you know, and, you know, that connection that, you know, I'll see people on online and stuff, they'll call you, like, you know, try to be like, you're the, you're the new Charlemagne or, you know, whatever, things like that. Right, right. Um, I never took it as that, but is that where you get a lot of your motivation from? Because he's doing some big things right now. Yeah, um... I mean, work wise, I mean, there's a lot of things. Charlamagne is definitely somebody um, I looked up to, and you know, uh, definitely took a few pages out of his book coming up. Um, but really, you know, it starts before him. It starts with the, you know, the PD Greens, 
um, of the world. It starts with the Michael Baysden. It starts with the uh, the, the the Ed Lovers. Oh, Dr. Dre's. You get what I'm saying? Like, right. there's been a lot of. Things. I'm more. I'm more. You know, if Martin Martin Payne, the, the 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 character that Martin portrayed on the <laughs> right. Martin show. Right. All of these really influenced me. You know, before I ever do what Charlemagne. Um, Charlemagne put it in like a very. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? And you put it in a very millennial modern way, though. He ate package and you know to to meet him and to be championed by him and have him, you know, say. Yeah, this kid gets it. That you know, that feels good. But you know, um, even when people compare me to him, it's like, all right, well, I'm in good company. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I've heard him talk about it before. When um, I don't know if his, the interview that I saw was him talking about he was interviewing a co-host or he was interviewing people for guy code or what it was, but he was saying that he can immediately tell within like the first couple of minutes of talking to somebody whether they're going to be a type of personality you can put in a show on a podcast on TV, whatever, because there's, right. you know, the kind of chemistry where like, there's no awkward pauses. There's it's right. It's back and forth. You know what I mean? Like right. there. And, and you know, it's impressive to me because once I read that and we've been doing this show, like almost two years or maybe longer than how long are we doing this? <laughs> two know. years. This is episode to me. It started to sink in. Like, you know what? Now I can tell when someone yeah. is comfortable in that space, you know what I mean? So it's, it's definitely interesting to, to see that kind of stuff. And now I watch yeah, shows with yeah, like a different, go ahead. Yeah. Like we're, we're definitely in an era where people are wanting to talk more and we're starting to be able to tell who can talk and who shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I enjoy this, this, this period we're in now where it's like, all right, this motherfucker should shut up. Like, shut up. <laughs> I, yeah, I think definitely button with as much um, the demand for Joe Budden to do something like that instead of rapping where he's even talking about being retired, this and that. That right. definitely goes a long way to show you, you know, there's not only one thing that some of these people can do. You know what I mean? Like if he didn't have shows right. on the Internet, the space would be more boring. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, you're 100% right. Joe is a great example of being able to be multifaceted and also that there's more jobs in, in music and entertainment than just being a rapper. Is there at any point have you been turned away? Like I said. Have I been turned away like first like have like you know. something turned me away or like a brand or somebody turned me away? A brand, anything. You know, because like I said you Oh know. yeah, the first yeah, it's like y'all people well, anybody who's been listening to the podcast oh. um would know. But you know, if you're just getting familiar with me, yeah, there was a whole there's two years worth of me being turned away because I either I'm too hood or I, I, I'm not polished enough or I didn't go to school or I, I, I'm i I'm willing to confront or be too honest. Yeah, I've been turned away. Yeah, two years. Two, two whole years of uh, that shit. So do you change up that in order to avoid so basically for our podcast you know we talk about sneakers and stuff like that and mm -hmm. we hold nothing back when it comes to sneakers and how we feel and you know i know that we can come off brash you know on a lot of topics and i know these companies they don't want to hear when their stuff or their product is trash or right. they don't want to hear that <laughs> and they don't hear the days where you say it's fire you know a lot of times we of give we give jordan brand we give nike we give adidas we give everybody a hard time when it's trash but when it's something that they put together, they never hear that. They don't hear that all the time. And I, I kind of personally from you, because like I said, you know, one thing watching, I always watch, you know, I'll apologize later. And like I said, that disclaimer that comes on the bottom, I'm like, man, that disclaimer, I'm like, well, that definitely must be a BET idea, you know. Oh, that's definitely a BET. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> how do you did. overcome that? Like, at what point did you make a change to that or did you just stay true to yourself? In order to just no, that's why that's the reason they put it there that I refuse to not be just me. Um, listen, we're in a we're in a time space, or at least when you come to me, when you come for now, when you come to get Mouse Jones, then you are coming to get honesty, and uh, that's why I'm it. I'm not gonna bullshit with you. I'm not. If I like it, I like it. If I don't like it, I don't like it. If I'm in the middle, I'm gonna be in the middle. But um, I'm not going to do. I'm not gonna be either way to push your narrative. No, I definitely agree with that. I mean, that's just one thing. It's one thing when we, like I said, we do our podcast and like, you know, you have those moments of where you're like, God, maybe I should lighten up a little bit. <laughs> but 
in my mind, I'm like, this is something that like we put together and something that we work hard to do every single week. You know, right? I can't. I come here to say what I want. Yeah, I, I don't come care here to say what I want. Says. Yeah, but at the same time, you still do want somebody important to listen and to have those opportunities that like. Um, I'm not going to come in here and be ridiculous, overly ridiculous, or be uh-huh. fake or whatever. But I'm still going to say what I want to say. I mean, right. that's the bottom line. Um, right. So you know, we always kind of go back and now we don't go back and forth. But you know, we have those internal battles with yourself of like, you know, is there anything you could do better? Is there anything you could improve? And when I listen to like the right. He Man, He Man, you know, Woman Haters Club podcast, like, I mean, you've always been that. So hearing you know those opinions, of, like you say, giving your views on Kanye and Nas and stuff like that. I'm thinking to myself, like, is that something like you might be a problem considering that you're at BET hosting, you know, and things like that? Um, uh, I mean, there are certain, so like the first week of the show, I got like a, I got like an email from like <laughs> the biggest of the bosses with like a list, a list of names I can't talk about, uh, which is like Jay-Z, Beyonce, Diddy, and I, I forgot who the other one is, so I'll probably violate, but um, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that. I mean, but I would never... I love Jay Z and Beyonce, so I would never say nothing about them. Diddy, they give me some leeway with as long as you know, I'm not like as long as I'm not going crazy on them. Other than that, they pretty much move out the way and let me talk my shit. Yeah, I mean, see, with uh, in a situation you know like that, like well, that was the thing I was going to ask you actually, like you know, Jay Z and Beyonce album just came out, and I haven't listened to it yet, you know, personally, um, right. But, do we still need Jay Z and Nas music at all? I don't know if we need Nas music, but we can. <laughs> <laughs> well, we see where you, we we see what side you fall on to. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hey, I, uh, listen. People can say whatever they want about Nas. I'm almost forty years old. If Nas wouldn't have been there, I think my experience growing up would have been a little bit different. I mean, the the out al- everyone focuses on Ether. And shit, I can't even remember what was Jay Z's song name. Oh, Super uh, Takeover. Take take over. There we go. Yeah. Everyone focuses only on those two songs, but everything on that Nas album and everything on that Jay Z album was fire. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, still mad it was still mad it was a great album. Phenomenal yeah. album. Super obviously was what it was. I can't even hear. What'd you say? I'm sorry. I said blue. I said I said still mad it was a great album for Nas. And then, you know, Blueprint ended up being what Blueprint is. So Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, everybody won in that one. All right, so are you uh, being in New York, growing up in New York, are you a Knicks guy? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just a heartbreak. <laughs> so how how you feel about the draft? Uh, I mean, hey, we, we were the Knicks. <laughs> I was surprised that we drafted a, a, an American. I, think, uh, <laughs> I, was, I was definitely expecting us to draft somebody with no vowels in their name. <laughs> okay, so then you, if you saying that, you gotta admit, did you think Porzingis was a bad pick when they picked him? No, Porzingis. I, I had no idea who the fuck he was. <laughs> right. Nobody you did. Know. I didn't know who he was. There. Well, well, he's hurt we now. Got, we got lucky there. You know, I was gonna ask you too. Sorry, just going backwards. You always seem to I always see you rocking off whites. Uh, you know. The, you said- you said I'm rocking with that off white. Yeah, I said I always see you rocking off whites, you know, IG and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, actually, I don't know what question you're gonna go with, but let me jump in real quick. Okay. How you feel about the the LV design? Is that where you're it going with that? Go with Ooh, that LV design ain't, ain't good. That's <laughs> not good. Yeah, we spent we spent about 20 minutes talking about that earlier. Yikes. Yeah, is, is that is that what we waited on, Virgil? Because we didn't need that. <laughs> no, we didn't. You know what? And that was one of the things we talked about. I didn't, sorry to cut you off, Greg. But okay. that was one of the things we were talking about earlier is because Gre- Greg was saying a couple shows ago that, like, the 10 that he did with Nike. And maybe he has more freedom with Nike. I don't know. But the 10 was one of Greg's favorite things. And he thinks it's one of the, it's greatest, the greatest collabs of all. Okay. Of all time. We disagree, but fine. At overall, as a project, yes. Individual <laughs> shoes, I, we'll, we'll disagree. So my thing what? is... He did all that with Nike, and that was what his result with Louis Vuitton was. Like maybe he had at least you know less freedom, but bruh. Yeah, no, I'm I'm 100 percent with you. I'm 100 percent with you. I don't think he should have did that shit at all. If that's what it's gonna look like. Then just don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Just the, don't do it. Yeah, I don't even like, see. People don't understand that there's like there's equity in saying no. 
don't right. even understand that. Right, okay. right, right. So yeah, so saying that to me, what you just said right now is so important because that Don C garbage that's supposed to come out, that hybrid trash. So they said Jordan Brand made that model already that Don C garbage and then they realized we're not going to be yeah, able to sell this sell. and they asked Don C to put his name on it everybody is like oh you know he probably did it to get the bag let me tell you something about your name saying no and putting your name on some garbage is worth more than whatever they're going to give you for being on that exactly. shoot exactly to me all right because Don C is getting all the backlash and all the trash and he might not have even yeah, all people, the tweets people think he designed it I mean I've been on Don C back for about a month all right he, <laughs> I think he blocked me on Twitter all right yeah no I just should just never ride on him this is trash because them jokes is garbage and to me if that was the real kid first of all I don't even like people look like I said we like Jordan Brand we hate Jordan Brand we like Nike we love Nike we hate Adidas we love Adidas whatever it is I think that like I said, if Jordan Brand made that and they're like, oh, we can't sell this. Hey, Don C, come through. We'll throw you a little bag real quick. Put your name on it. Add a little flair, whatever, to it. Fine. It is what it is. But like I, like you just Ashen said. Gold. Ashen gold lace tips. Yeah, like, and, and as you just said, saying no might be more valuable than saying yes all the time. And if Virgil had the option to say no to Louis Vuitton on that design or whatever, he should have said no. Period. He definitely had it. He could have said no, and probably could have pushed, probably could have pushed the button to get something else. But That's like I said, up. niggas want to just be the first to do it. Want to live in the, the realm of getting it done. So. All right. That's um, what we got, and that shit is trash. Yikes. You know, one last thing I wanted to ask, you know, before we let you go, you know, obviously we appreciate you giving us any time out of your day. Um, of course. You know, and, and that's I think that one thing doing a podcast, we've talked to a lot of people that like I never even knew existed or a lot of people that didn't think I'd have the opportunity to talk to. And like I said, like I'm not I'm actually, you know, a supporter of yours. I watch I Appreciate think you're just that. a super cool cat, you know, and it's something that we talk about. But I wanted to ask you, why did Nipsey slap that dude? <laughs> <laughs> why did he? What was that? So apparently. So apparently the uh, that was a security guard, and he was giving Nipsey a hard time with uh, parking where he was supposed to park. Oh. And um, I guess he thought those. What I will say, what I can attest to, is that those security guards at at the Microsoft Theater, while well, all the BT Awards weekend were were dickheads. <laughs> so you know, I, I believe and Nipsey it. had been out a long. He had been out all week, and I seen Nipsey since the day I got there. We were in like five events together, so. I'm sure he had ran into these guys multiple times, and hey, nigga was in his flip flops and I had, I had heard enough. <laughs> you know, if you could slap somebody, if you, could you slap that's an LA thing, by the way. I'm from LA. LA thing, you could be wearing the flyest outfit ever. Not saying I do it because I don't, but you could be wearing the flyest outfit ever and then have slides on. Oh yeah, that's facts. <laughs> and it makes no sense or house shoes for that matter. Well, Mouse, Listen, Mouse, the, Mouse hates LA. The, the importance of Nipsey Hussle as a you know hood icon comes from his, his his ability to slap a nigga so thoroughly <laughs> in flip flops. Oh, that's facts. First of all, he slapped somebody in flip flops and then performed. Like yeah, you're an immediate right after that. you're an immediate legend if you slap somebody and then go perform in flip flops. Yeah, we gotta get Nipsey his flowers now. And see, I'm just happy for Nipsey just in general because I've been a Nipsey fan forever. Well, you already know that's my well besides. Shrimp, shrimp life or shrimp or whatever <laughs> nipsey, <laughs> nipsey yeah besides that album nipsey's album is my favorite album of the year that, oh yeah thus far hands down yeah victory slap i mean victory lap was victory good. lap is phenomenal but you know one thing that i'm just happy seeing nipsey is like i remember when nipsey was starting out they couldn't get nipsey out the hood all right nipsey was still in the hood he's still in the hood but he's he's learned a little bit more they couldn't get well him. yeah he's not Cutting up like he used to be, but they oh. do documentaries or shows that he takes them right back to anywhere sixties territory. Yeah, this, this is definitely every hood niggas goal. Everybody, like, I mean, that, he got that's it. the way to do it. Buy the block, make a lot of money on your own terms. Get a fly, shorty. Oh, you already Live know. Live your life how you want to. <laughs> so there's actually, I'll tell this story real quick, but there's actually a story that I found out about when I went back home. So way back in the eighties, the neighborhood I grew up in in L.A. is a crip neighborhood. There's some stuff went down with a drug deal with rolling 60s. They killed some dudes, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, someone from my neighborhood met Nipsey Hussle just last year and, right. to and told Nipsey he, where he was from. And Nipsey mailed him 
a blue a, a drawing, a blue middle finger drawing <laughs> with the middle finger. <laughs> and you talking about somebody who wasn't even born yet when this happened. Like, that's the kind of person he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why his music is dope, because it stays the same and it's great and it 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 evolves. But Nipsey is one, a person that I consider just off surface value is a real one. That's what I, you know. Oh, I, don't, yes. I don't know well, how he is. So but. is YG. I mean, that's why. Oh, of course, well, YG Love might be a little YG. too real. My, YG is going. <laughs> YG might be going a little backwards. Dude. He's beginning. He's getting realer. All right, he's getting more famous. Uh, um, uh, like I said, you know, we appreciate you coming on. Um, what's next? Uh, what's next for you? More, just more. Um, you know, season two of I'll Apologize Later will be out in July. Um, we just wrapped season one. So shout out to everybody who watched. Um, shout out to BT for trusting me with the platform. Um, yeah, TV's next up. You know, got a few things working for TV. Oh, okay. And uh, just more He Man Women's Club just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Are you going? Um, are you going to still have time for the podcast? Say it again. You going to still have time for the podcast? I, I can't even hear you. I have what? I said, you are you still going to have time to do the podcast? Always, always, okay. always. He man, one made his club came first and foremost. So you know, never not. Go. And, and then it's also a platform where I go and say whatever the fuck I want. I don't have to worry <laughs> about anybody emailing me a list about who not to offend. So do the other shows? Then they they have no problem if you say something that like goes against whatever yeah. their show was I mean, earlier, pretty, or whatever. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I can't go out and talk about uh, great bitches and. <laughs> crazy shit like that yeah like i, right, I right. can't say that and, and not to uh not expect to lose um everything right right so right. yeah but um not pretty much they don't pay no mind to what's going on so you know it's safe to say that that, that mouse jones is, is here to stay oh yeah here to stay definitely here to stay this is just the beginning well, that's what's up there, you know. You know, like I said, we appreciate you coming on. You know, we'll let you go now. But you know, I think it's uh, it's important, to, you know, to say, you know, that you giving us the opportunity to talk to you again after you know last week obviously it didn't work out like we planned. Uh, it just shows the type of person yeah, you are. Yeah, the fuck sprint. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just shows the type of person that you are. And then like us starting our own platform, <laughs> it gives us the opportunity to meet good people, you know. And like I said, I hope we be able yeah, to definitely. talk to you again down the road. You know, we'll be on the lookout for them, uh, them LeBrons for you. You know, please go. If there's one thing, I need the Saint Mary Saint Vincent, um, LeBron one Zoom generation in size ten. So if any of your listeners got that, hit me and make sure it's for the low because I'm famous now. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you feel me? I'm going. I'm well, gonna if there's a... for the low, <laughs> and I'm gonna do an Instagram shout out like. So, like hey. <laughs> Yeah, you know, well, I'm gonna tell you if there's one thing that we definitely could provide, and that's yeah. being on the lookout for LeBron, for sneakers. Yeah, you know, that's listeners one thing who buy shoes. We got on lock is sneakers. So, like I said, you know, yeah, I appreciate yeah. you. I appreciate you coming on, and you know, like I said, we'll let you Already. go. But uh, you know, hopefully, we get to talk to you again down the road. See what else you copped, what else you're doing, and right, uh, right. you know, hopefully, one day maybe we'll connect one day, run into each other in a party. Yeah, I'm gonna come out to Arizona. I'm gonna come out to Arizona. Fuck with you. Oh, you come to Arizona? You you gotta come on the show. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pulling up. We went to Arizona. I'm pull up. Oh, that's what's up. We'll take you around. We we'll do some shopping too. Right, yeah, let's do all that. Let's bust it up. Oh, uh, you already know. All right, then, Mouse. We appreciate you. Appreciate it, man. All right, yeah, all right. you be easy. I don't know why I was gonna like press stop on the camera, even do an exit yet. Uh, was there anything else we missed? Dodgers are winning right now. Thank God. Of course uh, well, they are. I mean, I don't know. I think God, but <laughs> of course well, they lost. Yes. <laughs> They <laughs> lost yesterday, so I was a little bit angry. Look at you, thanking God. You know, lost your mind, ain't winning. <laughs> G-A, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you right now, the Dodgers win a baseball championship, World Series, the Raiders win a Super Bowl. Oh, right. I might have to believe in something. All oh, right. Yeah, they all win the same year. Hey, Jock Peterson, home run. Mm-hmm. If the Dodgers, if every single one of your teams win their sports in, in all in one year, <laughs> Kings, Raiders, I don't care. Dodgers. Kings won two recently. I'm, there's a, a moratorium on Kings championships. Yeah, I'm fine with Kings right now. All right. Okay, We. I mean, I'm actually pretty fine. much. Honestly, with hockey, I'm fine with 
now that Ovechkin got it, I really don't. Well, I don't want the Penguins to win another one. I mean, They've gotten well, enough lately. I mean, why not? And I hate the K- Vegas Knights, so we don't need to see them win. Uh, either. Okay. All right. King signed Kovalchuk. So you hate the Knights because they were good. That's no, crazy. No, no, it's not why no, I hate you, them. You hate the Knights; they were good because you feel like they weren't supposed to. Be. That's a, why you hate them. Yeah, but there's a couple reasons. They're yeah. in. They're in the same division. Okay. They had no business winning the division. The Kings have never won the, the Western uh, uh, Pacific in their history, and the Knights won it in the first year. You understand how angry that makes me? Well, you just thank God, so obviously he's out here doing his work. G A W D version. Uh, all right, he's not real. <laughs> that version's not real. Sky pilot. You know what's funny is how Pusha T and Drake beef just faded away. I don't even know why I thought about that. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because oh, actually, that's a conversation we need to have on the show. I'm about to we, ask Mouse. That. I should have asked Mouse that. No, I don't care about that. I, the Jay Prince thing we need to discuss at some point because we need listeners oh, to weigh in. Okay, what you well, were, what we were that. texting that day. Yeah, we yes. I would tell you this. I know nothing. I, okay, look, I back history things like that. If there is anybody that if I was in that industry or care, okay, I've said a lot of crazy things on that show before. <laughs> I will never say anything crazy about Jay Prince. Yeah, neither did I ever. I, I just know said that. I know you. I'm just saying my whole point was even Diddy, a CEO needs good employee, talented employees to make it work. So even if Jay Prince was like the ultimate first person who got respect, he's nobody without the Ghetto Boys. Okay. I mean, yes, okay, that's all but, I'm saying. Now, I'm not trying to discredit Master P. I'm not trying to discredit. Yeah, Bobby. but wait, I'm and not even talking about that. Look, I'm just talking about I Houston. Know. I'm look, Jay Prince is that guy. Okay, I understand that. So you know, well, we big me. Okay, he existed cats. twenty. Not I mean, okay, maybe not twenty years. He existed ten years before Master P and Baby and all them other people. Of course. So yes, that's not a discussion. My point was, I said the that Ghetto he Boys might be single handedly responsible for Southern music. Yeah, that's. fine. I mean. A, you said it was wrong. No, no, no. I didn't say you – You. my thing is if you say he started it, I disagree with that because you need artists to start something. Now, if you say he was the leader and spread it out, then I'm fine with that. Okay. Well, I won. Um, no. <laughs> because, uh, we agree to disagree. Again, if you don't have the Ghetto Boys and you don't have Scarface and you don't have um, UGK – is it UGK? Yeah. Okay. I don't like Bun B, is that? Yeah. All right. Because I know Pimp C been dead for a while, so I, I don't forgot. But if you don't have those acts, you don't end up going anywhere despite being a fantastic businessman or whatever you want to call him. Granted, he's an OG from the streets. He gets respect. But if you think uh, Bushwick Bill and Uncle, what's the name? Uh, Cousin D, Uncle yes. D, what's the name? Whatever okay. the other cast name of Ghetto Boys, they have the same level of respect that J Prince does trust me, but he might be responsible. And so does Scarface. Of course, Scarface might be a top five rapper all time. It's very possible. Possibly, I right. don't have my top five, but yes, I'd be fine with that argument. Your top five much has- better than having a fourteen last shots in your top five. Uh, no, but see, my top five of MCs is actual like bars MCs. I can make two different lists. I can make my favorite. MCs, and then I can make my favorite artists, which would be, you know, people who did things to create hip hop, expand hip hop. Biggie would be in there, Tupac would be in there, Jay Z would be in there because of how important they were expanding hip hop to what it is now. I have Biggie in my top five. I don't have Tupac in my top. But five. I don't think any of those three would be in my top MCs of all time. Jay Z wouldn't be in your top MC. Nah. Because when I think about MCs, I'm thinking about like Black Thought. Okay, yes, that's different. He, uh, I would tell the but what I'm, but what I'm but I, no, no, no. But it's not even okay. Well, that's another top five you can do. But my point is, you obviously listen. The Jay Z has the whole stigma of like he doesn't write his rhymes. He just goes in the booth and does it. We don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if if that's that. really okay, I'm saying if that's know, really know, true, you're fire. You're of fire. But Black Thought, we've seen him do, a, what was it, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Fire. Freestyle. Now, granted, that was recent, but Did like Raz Kaz, the- Black Thought, Talib Kweli, Common, like of Jay-Z course. and them cats are not in that. Even Joe Budden to tell you they're not in that realm. Nah, nah. Of course. Big L, like. Uh, I, <laughs> I mean, can't. I uh, can't vouch for Big L. I, I, I've never been a Big L fan. I don't, I, I just haven't. I'm not saying this movie's bad. I just. Big L, someone I never got into. I never. He's. I just didn't. Cannabis. I mean, now you want to talk about a funny career? 
But as an MC, is not too many people who cannabis is like to that level. Jewel Santana to me, nah. like I'm talking about, he raps better than Jewel Santana, but their careers are like, <laughs> like cannabis should have been way better. Jewel Santana should have been seen, way. Better. I seen cannabis on a, a battle, you know, like these new MCs that just like the battle. A with, recent with one, no beat. Yeah, it was like two some years ago. Oh, I like that. But I seen him on a video with a broken arm, and the man just would not stop making fun of his broken arm. Like, why would you <laughs> agree to go on that with a broken arm and and he lost? And I guess there's like, I don't know enough about battle rapping MCs to know what people like, but I guess if you have the ability to do that, people think you're cool. If you can't put a song together, in my opinion, you're trash. I'm uh, sorry. I don't know. If you can battle rap and memorize all that stuff for three but rounds. You can't is- write a rhyme or put music together or do something melodic. I don't have I don't have time for that. I agree. Because all them battle rappers that got like songs on YouTube, trash. Yes. Garbage. Supreme trash. Um We would know about them <laughs> if they were right. good. <laughs> None of them have anything that Daylight, I'm Daylight uh he oh. might. Oh, no, I'm not gonna go there. I don't know where he. Yeah, don't even There's don't go daylight. there. Daylight. Oh yeah, I'm not going there. Yeah, don't go there. <laughs> but daylight shells, daylight. whatever. Some of them, I can't even think of their names. But them cats, T-top, like whatever. All these cats. They can I, rhyme. I watch. I watch. This they thing. can rhyme acapella with no beat. Why that's a <laughs> thing? Like I what? don't. Know. Why that's a thing? I don't know. Acapella. But if you can't put a song, I'm sorry. You know, it's no time. I agree. And I like know. I said, one of my favorite records. Shrem, Shrem Life, whatever, whatever you, whatever the name. You really? I mean, first of all, I, I love. No, but I'm just Ray saying, Shrem. like that, like neither one of them would ever be confused with being an MC. And honestly, um, not Slim Jimmy, the other one. What's the other one name? The main one. I can't think of his name. Not Slim Jimmy. Slim Jimmy, the second I know, one. I'm trying button to think. Made fun of. Who's that? Um. Right, oh, okay, I gotta look this up because it's gonna bad. drive me nuts. All right. Um. Who can type faster? <laughs> Oh man, I did taste rumored. <laughs> Sway Lee. Sway Lee. Sway Dang Lee it. may be one of the most talented musical musical people on the entire planet. But I would never say like he's an MC. Of course not. He can sing. He can rap. He can write. He can produce. Like he's Quavo. He's better than Quavo. He's better than Quavo. He's a better musician than Quavo. I don't know if he's a better MC than Quavo. There's no, a difference. Quavo can actually rap. To yes. me. There's a difference. Takeoff but is the best rapper in all of them. Sway Lee Quavo. is I agree. I mean, blow my face like that. Well, yeah, okay. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> I, need, uh, I need you to chill out. Anything else? We got anything else? No. Nope. I got nothing else. All right. Well, <laughs> like we said, appreciate everybody listening. Need this podcast. IG. Dodger Twitter, scored again. What's the score? 6-2, I think. They love scoring points. Six, right? Runs, not points. Excuse, excuse me. Yeah. You're excused. When's the All-Star break? <laughs> July 12th? To the middle of July. I don't Man, know. Man, they need to hurry up so I can really get in the baseball. Although nah, I've been in the baseball a lot more than I have been usually. Anyways, I guess I gotta say this now. <laughs> you should have had Anna do it. I forgot. <laughs> I'm I'm waiting for it. I'm like, all right, anything else? I'm like, oh shoot. Uh-oh. <laughs>